What's up Chaos Shinobi here? This is what if Naruto has evolved Mangekyu. Summary, Naruto unlocks an evolved Mangekyu when he is experimented on with cells from Uchiha Madara watch as Naruto learns to harness this incredible power and control the blackest twins with his new eyes. Chapter 1 Six years ago, a pale hand rested against the glass incubator as a wide grin reflected eerily against the glossy surface. After the foolish Yondai Mei transferred the demon fox into his child, he had taken the initiative to steal the fresh Jinchuriki and whisk him away to the underground lab while the people were still in mourning. Even his old teacher had not noticed him sneaking into the infirmary. Laughing maniacally, he watched the baby wistfully as he placed all of his future ambitions on it. With the cells of Madara, his new body would be unstoppable. Getting the blood had come at a price, but if the gene experiment worked, this child would have all the abilities of Madara and more. All of his other subjects had failed him, but since this was the child of that man, he looked over towards an empty vial as he frowned. That was the last of the blood. All of his hopes now rode with this child. It would be just a little longer until the child's DNA combined with a foreign blood sample. If the baby survived until then, his ultimate host would be born. Just a little. Orochimaru. The man turned as he heard a familiar voice call his name. Ah. Sarutobi Sensei? Have you come for the child? Outwardly Orochimaru showed no surprise. But on the inside, he began screaming at the machine to finish the process faster. Five minutes. I thought that I had banished you those many years ago. How dare you come to this village and start your experiments again? The Ondame is dead and now you disgrace us with your abduction of his son. I thought that I had raised a strong and righteous shinobi. The snake Sani narrowed his eyes dangerously as his gaze pierced the aged man. Shinobi are never righteous, sensei. We do things for the sake of power. Such is the fate of all weapons. Four minutes. Orochimaru. I will stop you here now. Four years ago, I did not have the heart to turn my hand against my own student. But today, you will meet your end. A sudden alarm went off as both men turned to look at the container. The baby's vital signs flatlined causing the snake man to swear aloud. He was so close. If only the child had just survived for a few more minutes. Deciding that it was a lost cause, Orochimaru sighed as he saw his former teacher summon Emna. He would try to attain the blood sample again and replicate the experiment with a different host. As much as I would love to stay and kill you, I have other matters to attend to Sarutobi-sensei. Making some hand seals, a large gust of wind tore through the cavern, allowing Orochimaru to fly away with it. Sarutobi was about to chase after him when his summon suddenly stopped him. Wait. Check up on the child. Sarutobi clenched his fists as he nodded. His old friend was right. The boy came before his personal vendetta. Walking over to the glass container, he emptied the strange yellow fluid before cuddling the motionless young child in his hands. Small tears leaked out of his wizened face as he looked at the innocent child in sadness. Today they had lost two great men, one had given his life for the village and the other had died before being given a chance. Emna. The wise monkey king, sighed as he bowed his head. However, a gurgle suddenly echoed in the dismal cavern, causing both of them to immediately look at the baby. The baby coughed out a couple milliliters of yellow water before crying. He was alive. Sarutobi thanked the heavens as he wiped his tears. Nodding to Emna, he dismissed the monkey king and stepped out of the chilly cavern. Their great hero had fallen today, but an even greater one had stood up in his place. Uzumaki Naruto. I hope you will continue the legacy your father has made and make it even greater. I will be counting on you in the future. But as the wind settled and the soon-to-be-reinstated third Hokage walked towards his office, the baby's eyes peeled open as a sudden pinwheel of black clashed against a crimson background. And then, before the old man could notice, it disappeared behind the great cerulean eyes of the child and hid, ready to emerge in the coming years. Chapter 2 the windmill begins to turn. The molded flowers threatened to break apart under the harsh winds and the clouds seemed angry with the world. As five-year-old Uzumaki Naruto looked up at the sky, his two blue crystalline orbs felt water splash against their irises. Tears seemed to form, but his face remained impassive without the usual puffy visage that most people experience. Walking over to the sandbox, his small hands clutched the muddy dirt, and he played. It was here, during the cover of night and rain, that he could play in peace. It was here with no one around him, that he could hide from the penetrating glares of those terrifying people. It was here, that he felt human. It had been exactly 890 days since he had been kicked out of the orphanage. He knew because he counted the times the sun passed over him and rose again from the foliage of the Konoha forest. The majority of the days he hid from the sun and stayed in his one-bedroom apartment. The Hokage made the occasionally visit, even bringing candy and other treats from time to time. But that was it. Everyone else feared and scorned him thinking him to be a demon of sorts. Uzumaki Naruto was no fool, even at such a young age. 
he knew of the QB and how he hosted the great demon. His birthday was the celebration QB's defeat. The Hokage had praised him for his high cognitive ability. It wasn't hard to put two and two together. In the end, he discovered the truth behind the stairs long before he felt any presence of his tenant. But October 10th, it would be coming soon. He would have to make his annual trip to the forest and wait while the celebration occurred. His home was an especially popular site during that day with rocks thrown through his window from angry drunkards. The Anbu usually took care of them, but they always returned every year to throw more rocks. But despite the treatment, he did not hate them. No, he did not hold any resentment. He had long since abandoned self-pity, it was a harsh lesson that he had been taught early on in his life, but even as he convinced himself that nothing was wrong and that he was as happy as possible, the muddy castles built by his calloused hands fell apart from the moisture caused by his silent tears and the rain. Ah! He smiled as he felt the mud crumble. I guess sandcastles don't work well with water. He tried a half-hearted attempt to laugh but instead ended up coughing. But even as the sand fell apart, he continued to push together mounds and towers in hopes of replicating the exciting experience he had seen those children have just six hours ago. But as he continued to work, he missed the looming presence that stalked towards him. What are you doing here? Naruto immediately turned around as his face paled. His hands were covered in mud. As if they were blood from a horrific crime scene, he quickly tried to wipe them on his shirt. The man stepped closer and knelt down. One look at the collapsed sandcastle told him everything. With a smile. He used the bottom of his shirt to help the child wipe his hands. Naruto's eyes widened as his body froze. What was this man doing? Why was he helping him? Finishing the deed, the stranger then stood up as he let the rain clean his now dirty hands. Well now. We can't have a child standing all alone in the rain, can we? Naruto looked up at the man as he tried to pull his mask up. I was playing. Whether it was because of the rain or cold, his usual facade of apathy was failing miserably. The man smiled as he ruffled the child's hair. Well Naruto, your name is Naruto, right? The blonde-haired child nodded slowly. The man stretched out his hand as he smiled. My name, is Uchiha Shisui. At that moment, the wheels of time began to turn, spinning endlessly and relentlessly in a spiraling motion that would give birth to the greatest Sharingan user the world would ever see. Three years later, Shisui Nisan. Itachi-san. I finally did it. Shisui and Itachi broke from the conversation as they saw a small child run towards them. A blonde child dressed in black garb looked up at them in sheer happiness as he pointed to a target. Look. I can do the technique you guys showed me. Making hand seals, Naruto took a deep breath as he channeled his chakra. Katan, Kuruendan. A blazing stream of white hot fire erupted from Naruto's mouth and incinerated the nearby log. Itachi looked mildly impressed as Shisui reached down and lifted up Naruto. Whoa. That was totally awesome Naruto. I couldn't do that until I was 10. You even beat Itachi by 3 months. Naruto blushed as he scratched his head. It had been 3 years since he had met Shisui and already he had learned so much. Of course, their relationship had to be kept a secret since the Uchiha clan would never allow a stranger to learn their techniques. But Shisui was surprisingly lax on Uchiha laws while his friend Itachi didn't really seem to care about anything. Naruto looked over at Itachi as he smiled knowingly. Ever since he had met Shisui, the Uchiha prodigy had helped the blonde learn many things. In fact, it was he that had actually brought up the idea of training Naruto in the first place. As far as he knew, Itachi and Shisui had been best friends ever since they were young. Due to their near-identical appearances, they were frequently confused for each other. The solemn Itachi looked exactly like Shisui save the strange lines running below the former's eyes. Also, Shisui had slightly lighter hair bordering on a dark blue. It was quite interesting to see the two debate about who had better looks. But of the trio, it was Naruto who had changed the most. Before he met Shisui and Itachi, he had never known the meaning of companionship. These last years had been great for him, the training and conversations were a joy for the young blonde youth. Moreover, he had already learned nine jutsu and had a vast amount of training in taijutsu. Naruto, come here. Itachi beckoned Naruto as he held up a piece of paper. This is your schedule for the next two years. Since I have to start training for Anbu, Shisui will have to look over your training. So we won't see each other anymore? Itachi smiled as he ruffled Naruto's hair. I'll definitely visit. And next time, I'll even bring Sasuke. Naruto brightly smiled as he thought of the younger Uchiha. He had only met him twice, but those were some good times. Sasuke was a nice and hard-working person. Although he seemed jealous of Naruto's relationship with his brother, the two had hit it off quite nicely and had even trained together on the random occasion. Of course, he had been careful to hide his true strength in fear of alienating the young Uchiha. Oh, but before you go home Naruto. Here, 
a present from both of us. Shisui handed Naruto a long wooden box with the word fire on it. He tried to open it but found that the cover was sealed tightly. It has a blood seal. The gift's a little advanced for you right now, so we made it so that it'll open when you have a certain amount of chakra. Naruto nodded as he humbly thanked the two for the gift. Itachi then shuffled through his bag as he pulled out an old scroll. Naruto noticed out of the corner of his eye that Shisui seemed surprised to see it there. Itachi, that's... A penetrating glare silenced him as Itachi proceeded to hand the scroll over to Naruto. That scroll is the greatest treasure of the Uchiha. It holds all the secrets of the Sharingan as well as the dark past associated with it. Since you are not of Uchiha blood, you cannot open it. That is why I am entrusting you with it. Make sure that it is never found. Shisui looked troubled as he nervously glanced at the scroll. If the clan members found out that he had the scroll, don't worry. I won't fail you. Naruto determinedly gazed at the two. Itachi nodded as he gave one of his rare smiles. Yes, I know. Standing up, Itachi patted Naruto's head one last time before walking away. Shisui, we need to attend the clan meeting. Shisui grumbled as he stood up slowly. Jeez. Those old farts just have to call these random meetings during our vacation. Sorry Naruto, we'll have to play later today. Why don't you go training for now? His face adopted a more serious pose though as he went up to Naruto and whispered in his ear. That scroll is more dangerous than it seems. I think I know why he gave it to you, but regardless of anything that might happen, know that it will bring trouble. Make sure no one knows about it. And if you have to, burn it. There are things in there that need to stay hidden. This is a big burden, but I trust you. Smiling once again. He waved goodbye as he ran to catch up with Itachi. Naruto nodded to himself as he put the box and scroll down on Shisui's porch. Sitting down, he began meditating as Itachi's words echoed in his mind. A good ninja does not need strength or speed. He only needs precision and accuracy. Knowing thousands of techniques will not help you. Knowing five incredibly well will save you. Don't fall for flashy jutsu, they tend to be useless and overrated. The most important thing is to visualize and waste as little movements as possible. Control the battle with your mind and you will control the outcome. Meditation can help you do this. Naruto's eyes remained completely still as he focused his chakra. To an outside observer, it appeared as if the child was simply sitting. But if one looked and inspected the boy's chakra, they would see it weaving intricate patterns and designs across the boy's body as if it were a dance. The chakra itself was nearly invisible since visible manifestation was, according to Itachi, a waste of energy. And so, Naruto continued his silent meditation as he felt his chakra expand beyond his own thoughts and bridge into nothingness. Ooh oh. Hinata was angry. No. She was furious. Just because she had learned Juken at the age of five did not mean that her younger sister had to start training at the age of four. At this rate, her father would end up breaking her little sister before she even got the chance to speak properly. Ever since her mother's death, her father had been unusually strict in his training regimes demanding that the Hyuga heiress learn as much about the clan's techniques as possible. It was from this tough love that she developed an icy aura around her person. At one time, she had been a shy and caring person. Her father had changed that. Now she was known as the Ice Princess of Konoha, a ridiculous title if she had anything to say about it. If anyone were to blame for her cold demeanor, it was her father. But it was during this fine morning that the young Hyuga was especially angry. So angry that she had left the Hyuga grounds and had wandered farther than she had ever wandered before. Eventually she had gotten lost and had ended up looking for any familiar streets. But it was because of her predicament that she saw him. He was sitting down on the porch of a small shack in the middle of the forest. His face was extremely pale and his hair was a strong blonde. His clothes reminded him of the Uchiha, the sworn enemy of all Hyugas. But based on his hair color, she had good reason to believe that he was probably part of another clan. The strangest thing about his features were the three lines running across his cheeks in a whisker fashion. Making the hand seals necessary for the Byakugan, she tried to take a closer look at them before something even more fascinating took her attention. The chakra inside his body was moving with incredible flexibility. Even older Hyugas did not that have ability. As if he were totally aware of every movement, his chakra seemed to react to his thoughts and twist and turn. So mesmerized was she by his technique that she missed the slight twitch in his eye. What are you doing here? Hinata broke out of her thoughts as surprise shook her. However, she quickly adopted her cold attitude as she walked towards him. I was walking around the village and I saw you doing that with your chakra. What's your name boy? Naruto slowly opened his eyes before looking up at the girl. She was small, with an even paler complexion than him. Her pearl white eyes complemented her dark blue hair and judging from her clothes, she was from some rich family. Not that he cared though. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. So what's your name? 
girl? He nodded and narrowed her eyes dangerously as she clenched her fists. How dare he call her a girl? Didn't he know who she was? Granted, she was only eight, but still. In her home, she had the respect of adults and seniors ten times her age. And yet this boy dare address her in such a way? My name is Hayuga Hinata. But you must call me Hayuga Sama, eh? That's not really cool for me. Naruto yawned as he stretched his legs. Why should I address you as Sama? You're probably the same age as me. Hinata bit her lip as she clenched the sides of her white kimono. If there was one thing her father successfully drove into her, it was that hard work made you superior to others. Forgetting the earlier ease with which the boy controlled his chakra, she stepped up to him and looked up at his eyes. You'll address me as Hayuga Sama because I am your superior. In a fight I would defeat you in less than a minute. Picking up the scroll and the wooden box, Naruto stepped down from the porch and started to walk away. He didn't need this right now. After all, he had training to do. Hinata stared at his retreating figure in bafflement. First he disrespected her and did not address her by her proper title. It was rare of her to even grace a commoner with her words, yet he completely ignored her. More than that though, she was surprised at herself for getting so worked up. Usually she would be the one ignoring people. But for some reason, he just caused her to feel unsettled. Deciding that this was an opportune time to vent some anger from her earlier experience with her father, she called out to him. Hey, boy. Naruto stopped mid-step. I challenge you to a duel. As a ninja, you'll accept, right? Naruto thought for a second as he contemplated his choices. He could always just keep walking and ignore her, but she seemed like one of those stubborn types. Of course, he could fight and win and knock her down a few pecks, but that wouldn't be cool since he'd miss out on precious training time. Then again, Shisui san always did tell him to take what you could get. After having sparring sessions with only Itachi and Shisui, perhaps an easier opponent would help him gauge his strength. Besides, from the way she carried herself, he could tell that she had indeed gone through some difficult training. Okay, I accept your challenge. But let's make some conditions first. He not a smirked as she nodded. If I win, you must address me by my proper title and be my servant for the rest of your life. For some reason, something about that last part made her feel a little strange. Naruto turned around as he placed his scroll and box down. Taking off his black jacket, he tossed it towards a nearby tree and cracked his neck. Okay. But if I win, you call me by my name. Also, you have to teach me some of your jutsu. Hinata was taken by surprise for a few seconds before nodding. It wasn't as if he would win anyways. And even then, a non could never learn the juken. I agree. Naruto nodded as he stretched out his limbs. Why don't you attack me first? I've had little practice going on the defensive, so it'll be a good experience for me. Hinata's eye twitched as she pushed chakra towards her hands. Sprinting forward, she leaned with her right and waited for the impact. It never came. The boy was surprisingly agile. Rearing her left hand back, she then continued her strikes, but none of them hit. Your footing's a little slow. So even though your hands are fast, your lower body can't keep up so you end up lagging a little. Hinata was about to retort when she realized that her father always told her that. Even more angry, she charged again. This time with her arms following her feet. Her hands suddenly hit something soft and immediately she knew that she won. Once Jukin made contact, the enemy would be immobilized and unable to move their body. You should have done a follow-up attack. Hinata's eyes widened as the boy grabbed her outstretched hand and grinned. The boy didn't seem hurt at all. Trying to break free, she pulled back her hand but winced as his grip tightened. Another mistake I saw was that you tend to get overconfident. In a real battle, one attack isn't going to finish anyone. Plus, you never know what advantages your opponent might have. For instance, I can control the chakra in my body to reflect any attacks you do. Also, another disadvantage you have is that when you attack, chakra leaks from your hand. By concentrating harder, you should be able to keep all of that chakra inside your pathways and give a stronger attack. Hinata stopped struggling as she realized that he was right. Despite her storming pride, he had pointed at one of the greatest weaknesses of Jukin. Still, she wasn't the Hyuga heiress for nothing. Releasing chakra through her pores, she let out a wave of chakra that took him momentarily by surprise. Now free, she jumped back as she activated the Byakugan. She would not lose. Naruto watched interestedly as he saw her eyes bulge and adopt a strange tint. She was definitely good for her age, but he had a feeling that she had some aces hidden up her sleeve. Then again, so did he. Not allowing her to do whatever she was going to do, he quickly made hand seals. Katan, House Kano Jutsu. Hinata quickly jumped away as she saw nine fireballs attack the ground. Despite the adrenaline rush, she had to admit that it was an impressive attack. She had little respite to ponder though as her Byakugan caught a blurry movement to her left. 
He's fast, Katun, Gukaku no Jutsu, a giant fireball went straight towards her. However, her Byakugan caught it in time and she rolled to the left. Running forward, she launched a series of attacks that caused him to jump back. Finding her chance, she jumped up after him and attacked his leg. With glee she realized that it made contact since he seemed to land awkwardly. She was far from done though. Running forward, she dived towards the ground and used her right hand to attack the Tenketsu points on his left leg. Finally he wouldn't be able to move so quickly, Naruto swore as he felt his legs tremble from exertion. He hadn't fully mastered chakra control near his legs. That was the hardest area to shield from chakra-oriented attacks. As he was now, he could probably only manage a light jog at best. But then again, he didn't need his legs for this match. Throwing himself headfirst at the floor, his arms pushed off as he began a series of handsprings. With momentum, he didn't need to rely on his legs if his arms were strong enough. Bewildered by his movement, Hinata stood back as she saw this tumbling wheel of yellow and black fly towards her. Not knowing how to counter, she simply dodged. It seemed he anticipated this though, since he stopped turning midair and began another series of hand seals. Cage Bunshine no Jutsu A clone materialized in midair and grabbed onto Naruto. Swinging with all its might, it then launched the boy at the girl before dismissing itself. As Naruto sped through the air, Hinata's body froze. Seeing his chance, Naruto turned his body and grabbed her shoulder, causing both of them to fall onto the ground. He immediately then grabbed her left arm and pinned it behind her back. I guess I win since you can't really do anything. Hinata gritted her teeth in pain as she tried to free her arm. After a couple futile attempts at swiping him, she rested her head on the floor and sighed. It was humiliating, but, okay, I give up. You win. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Naruto. The blonde boy smiled as he let go of her and stood up. Hinata sorely stretched her arm before frowning. I don't get how I lost. Father made me work so hard and yet you beat me so easily. Naruto patted some dirt off of his pants as he walked over to his items. You don't get it, do you? You're limited by your style. In the end, the only thing you could do was attack me with your chakra strikes. They're amazing techniques, but if your opponent is faster than you, you have no chance. Hinata nodded as she felt a bitter feeling climb up her stomach. If she was still so weak, she would never be able to protect her sister. Of course, you have amazing chakra control and you're able to think fast. Also, your Jukin technique really is amazing. My legs are still stiff from your attacks. So don't be discouraged. You should just try to work on your speed. Oh. Thanks. I guess. She quickly turned her face as she felt a light red tint grow on her cheeks from the earlier compliment. It was rare that she ever got constructive criticism. I'll try to work on my speed. Good. Naruto was about to walk away before he suddenly stopped as if remembering something. That's right. The conditions for my winning was that you'd teach me some techniques. Hinata paused as she thought carefully. But I don't know any techniques besides the Byakugan and Jukin. Naruto thought for a second before smiling. Then you can teach me Jukin. Hinata scoffed as she thought of the idea. There's no way someone without the Byakugan can learn Jukin. We won't know unless we try, right? How about meeting here next Friday? Hinata hesitated as she thought of her training. I guess I could spare one day. Great. I guess I'll see you next week. By then, Hinata raised her hand slowly as she waved. It had been an interesting morning for sure, despite the ordeal she had gone through with her father. But perhaps it turned out to be a blessing. Looking around, she saw the black jacket the boy had thrown earlier dangling off a tree. Shaking her head, she took it and decided to give it to him the next time they met. Oh shoot. I'm still lost. I should have asked for directions. Ooh oh. Hinata walked towards the complex as she kept a sigh of relief buried inside her throat. After hours of asking and walking around, she had finally found the Hyuga district. Walking into the familiar giant gates, she was at once ambushed by several branch members. Hyuga-sama. Where were you? Why are your clothes so dirty? Hyashi-sama is incredibly mad. Hinata grumbled as she turned to them. Out. None of your business. And I don't care. Ignoring the rest of their pleas, she walked into her room and shut the door. She was surprised however to see her sister waiting on her bed. One Isama. Hinata smiled as she took off her dirty kimono and placed it in a basket. I was out training. Sorry for leaving you behind Hanabi-chan. Hanabi nodded before seeing the black jacket. Tilting her head she looked up questionably. Jacket? Hinata blushed a little before tossing it on the bed. It's, from a friend. Ducking into the shower, she closed the door and sighed. The day had been interesting indeed. Ooh oh. Naruto wiped the sweat off of his brow as he finished his last squat. Reveling in the feeling, he practiced the speed of his hand seals as he tried to nail them down to a second. Okay. So far I know four katan jutsu, gauge bunshine no jutsu, 
one Doden Jutsu, Henj, Kawamiri, and Bunshine no Jutsu. Shisui san said that my Taijutsu was good and that my speed was my greatest asset. Also, I've learned a lot of techniques with the Chokudu and have an okay mastery over combat with it. That leaves Genjutsu. I only know one technique, but Itachi-san said that he would teach me more of those later. Looking up at the sky, he noticed that it was a full moon today. The moon was unusually white and large, reminding him of his earlier encounter with the girl. Despite having only Itachi and Shisui for company, he had been quite talkative with her. In the corner of his mind, he thought of next week and how they would meet again. He had no doubts that Jukan would be hard, but having another teacher besides Itachi would probably help him. Besides, he had learned that it was good to specialize while remaining open to other techniques. Continuing his hand seal practice a little longer, he became satisfied with the speed and shook out his arms. Tomorrow was Satura Day, aka Hell Day, where he would spar Itachi and Shisui. He always ended up with a broken bone or two, but thanks to the fox it usually healed by the next day. That didn't mean that it didn't hurt though. Wincing, he did a cool down stretch before walking back to the apartment. It was already late so Shisui Nichan and Itachi-san probably already went home. Down at the forest stream 7 miles from the Uchiha clan house. What's the deal Itachi? It's Naruto's birthday and we haven't given him a proper celebration yet. Itachi looked at the water before activating his Sharingan. Shisui. Do you know the history of the Sharingan? Shisui nodded as he looked at his friend. The change of topic surprised him, but he answered nonetheless. Yeah. It was in the scroll that you gave Naruto. Why did you give it to him anyway? It'll only bring trouble for him. Itachi nodded as he closed his eyes. It was for the sake of his survival. There is no one more suited to carry that scroll than that child. Shisui looked at him cautiously as he asked slowly. What do you mean? Itachi sighed as he looked up at the full moon. That boy, has something akin to the Sharingan. Shisui nodded as he stepped up to the water. Yeah, I know. You haven't been the only one training him. I didn't think that you knew though. Is that why you gave him the scroll? Would it really matter though? Since he's not of Uchiha descent? Itachi nodded. Shisui, do you remember reading about the Mangeku Sharingan? Yeah. It was supposed to be the first Sharingan, called the Evil Windmill, and was made by Uchiha Madara. Only a select few can activate it. There are six methods for activation, the fastest yet most difficult process being killing your best friend. The symptoms of Sharingan users capable of gaining the Mangeku are horrific nightmares, deteriorating eyesight, and strong bursts of killing intent that Shisui paused as he noticed Itachi's crimson eyes staring at him. He paused for a few seconds before sighing. Ah. I had a feeling that you would try this. Itachi's face remained impassive as he continued staring at Shisui. You suspected me? Shisui brushed some bangs out of his hair as he smiled. Of course. I was always the smarter one. And my eyes are better than yours. Itachi smiled as he pulled out a kunai. Then you won't blame me for doing this. You've had ample time for preparation. Shisui nodded as he activated his Sharingan. Ever since I met you, I knew that you were going to surpass any other Uchiha and achieve the impossible. I became your friend in hopes of changing you, but it seems as though I was too late. You were corrupted from the start. I'm sorry that it became like this. I really did care about our friendship. As for Naruto, I thank you for helping me take care of him. Itachi nodded solemnly. The only reason why this will work is because you have become my best friend. I truly do acknowledge you as a talented shinobi and a dependable person. Shisui took out a kunai as he let the moonlight bathe it in a glorious shine. If it is our destiny to fight, then I will fight. I have no delusions about who's stronger, but I guarantee you that I will not make it easy. Throwing his kunai, Shisui ran towards his friend. That night, under the mournful eye of the moon, two friends fought, and blood spilled from one while the other walked away with crimson eyes, never to be the same ever again. Chapter 3, Jogan Naruto panted as he slid away on all fours, his fingers digging into the ground to slow his speed. That last attack had been particularly vicious and had succeeded in breaking two ribs. Feeling the Kyuubi already start to heal the bones, Naruto unsheathed his Chokudo and rushed Itachi. Traveling at a speed that almost caught the Sharingan user by surprise, Naruto disappeared and reappeared in Itachi's blind spot, ready to deliver a severing blow with his sword. It was all for naught though as Itachi grabbed Naruto's sword hand without looking. Your legs go faster than your arms. Basically, you have lag time. You should know better than to come at me with anything less than perfection. A slight wave of nostalgia hit Naruto as he tried to escape. It was too late though, as Itachi threw him up clear into the air. The Uchiha began some hand seals as he held his fingers up to his mouth. Katan, Gukaku no Jutsu. A fireball the size of a small arena flew up towards the airborne boy, covering a radius of 30 feet. 
flying into a set of hand seals, Naruto immediately made 20 clones. They then linked together with their arms and threw the real Naruto out of the fire's path. Landing on a branch, he stabbed his sword into the tree trunk before counter-attacking with his own set of hand seals. Katan, Ryu Kano Jutsu Naruto unleashed a stream of fire that ran down his own clones and collided with Itachi's fireball. The result was a gigantic eclipse that showered the Uchiha with red-hot fire. Knowing that he would have dodged the attack, Naruto jumped towards a nearby branch and created three cage bunshines. Sending out each one, he created a perimeter and used the only Doten Jutsu he knew. Doten, Doryuaki. The four Naruto's all spat out mud which quickly grew into an enclosed area with 70 feet high walls. It had taken almost all of his chakra, but with this technique, he had succeeded in trapping the Uchiha prodigy. Summoning another clone, he made it toss him up as far as it could. He then summoned another one in mid-air making it throw him up further. He continued this process six times until he finally reached the top of the wall. Smirking, Naruto knew that Itachi would not be able to escape since he had made the walls with a special trick. By weaving his chakra into specific patterns, he made it so that any chakra contact with the wall would be impossible, thus, you couldn't climb the walls with chakra. Creating a series of hand seals, Naruto was about to unleash his strongest fire technique into the cubicle when he suddenly felt a strong burst of killing intent leak down from the bottom of the man-made building. It happened in an instant. The wall suddenly shattered into a million pieces as an enormous black flame erupted from the center. Naruto could only stare at the scene in shock as he saw his near impenetrable wall topple into nothing. It simply became mounds of dirt and sand, unable to stand up with only his chakra for support. Looking down in slow motion, a sudden shadow flew up towards him as felt pain. Looking down, his eyes widened as he felt Itachi twist the kunai inside of stomach before letting him fall. However, Naruto suddenly felt his descent being slowed with a wind. Looking up, he saw Itachi floating down in a similar fashion. Shuddering, he knew that if Itachi had not used the Fuutenjutsu at that moment, even Kyuubi's chakra would not have been able to save him from the fall. Despite the wound in his stomach, Naruto slowly stood up as he felt his feet land on the ground. Walking over to Itachi, he groaned as he pulled off his shirt. Itachi-san. You're so strict today. You never stabbed me before. Itachi closed his eyes as his lips tremored a little. Breathing slowly, the man then opened his eyes as a steely gaze came across his features. You did well today Naruto. I am sorry for going too far, but it was for your own good. Naruto spat out some blood as he sat down on the floor. I don't think I'll ever get used to being stabbed. Itachi smiled as he too sat down on the forest floor. Don't worry. You are strong for a ninja. I am sure that one day, no pain will ever hurt you. Naruto's eyes brightened as he stood up. Real OWWW. Naruto swore as he fell back down on his butt. Maybe I should take it easy for a while. But thanks for the compliment Itachi-san. It was only because of you and Shisweeni-san that I was able to come so far. Itachi nodded as he felt a small twinge of guilt rise up in his stomach. He quickly eliminated it though as he adopted his apathetic aura again. Me. Where's Shisweeni-san again? Itachi quickly replied with ease. He said that he had a mission. He told you to keep training and stay out of trouble. Naruto nodded as he laid on the ground. Sure, he got a lot of training when Itachi was there, but Shisui always made training fun with his creative games. One time they fought while only standing on their hands. Smiling at the memory, he recalled Shisui putting Itachi in a choker hold with his feet. He had experienced some good times, and he hoped that they would continue forever, even if he was never accepted by the village. As long as he had Itachi and Shisui, everything would be okay. Turning towards Itachi, Naruto sighed as he felt his wound closing. Itachi-san? Itachi turned his head as he raised an eyebrow. How did you do that one technique? The one with the black fire I mean. I never knew that such a strong flame existed. Itachi shook his head as he shrugged. It was by instinct. I recently gained an asset. It seems as though the technique was one of the benefits. But your attack was also well planned and carried out. In another scenario. You might have actually ended up disabling me. Naruto blushed as he scratched his head. Ah. You're making fun of me. There's no way I could match you guys yet. You guys are the strongest ninja ever. Itachi smiled at the innocent comment as he whispered to himself. Yes. Sometimes it is a curse. Naruto did not notice the teen's comments though as a butterfly suddenly caught his attention. Forgetting about his wound, Naruto jumped up and ran towards it while laughing. Itachi merely shook his head as he sighed. Despite his strength. Naruto was still a child. It would take more to make him into the shinobi that he wished to face. A dark thought suddenly penetrated his mind as he unconsciously activated his Sharingan. It would take something, horrific. Itachi suddenly shook his head as he rubbed his temples. 
There was a line that he would draw. He would never intentionally hurt the child, but you already did. You did not hesitate to stab him before. He has the QB. Itachi rationalized. I only did it because it wouldn't harm him. The sinister voice in his mind laughed as it replied. Did you really think that at the time? I know you wanted blood. I felt your mind craving it. You wanted to kill him. No, you already killed your best friend. Why is this boy any different? Itachi blinked as he felt his head spin in circles. What was happening to him? Deciding that he was probably hallucinating due to fatigue, Itachi stood up as he called Naruto. Naruto, come here. The blonde jumped up as he ran towards Itachi. It seems that the day's activity has proved stressful for me. I will go home and rest now. I want you to continue training until sunset. Naruto nodded as he strapped on some weights and retrieved his sword from the tree. Sure. I was planning to train with my sword some more. I wanted to be faster than Shisui san Itachi nodded as he turned to walk away. With a light jolt he remembered that his younger brother had gone to the academy orientation today. He would start school in a week or so. Tonight is the night. He said that you had to carry out the plans this evening. With this, you will complete me and we will become the greatest Uchiha. Itachi felt his head split as he continued to walk towards his house. Ooh oh. Naruto cut through the last leaf as he quickly sheathed the sword. Jumping back, he admired his handiwork before collapsing to the ground from exhaustion. Shisui had once said that he had cut 200 leaves while they were still falling from the trees. Each slice had to be perfectly in the center with the two halves exactly symmetrical. Naruto noted with a frown that he could only manage 60, if not 80 on his good days. The exercise required extreme speed and sword control. Moreover, it trained your eyes to be able to see every little random movement of the leaves. His brother was a genius in that aspect. While Itachi had an incredible capacity for learning jutsu and refining his technique, Shisui stuck with the elementary basics and focused on honing his greatest asset, speed. Supposedly, Shisui was even faster than the enigmatic green beast of Konoha. The so-called beast was a mystery to Naruto because both Shisui and Itachi had refused to allow Naruto to meet him. Rain began to fall as the sky became menacingly dark. A storm had been coming for a long time. Looking back at the fallen leaves, Naruto sighed before picking himself up. It was time to go home. Ooh oh. Hinata sat up from her bed as she rubbed her sore arms. Her father had disciplined her severely for walking out of the complex yesterday. It was worse that Hanabi had to see too. The young girl had immediately started crying when her father began attacking her with the bokuto. Clenching her fists, she turned over and stretched her arms. Eventually the pain subsided as she moved her chakra through her system. As she felt a wave of refreshment, her mind began to turn to other things. Despite her earlier experience, she was actually quite excited to meet the boy, what's his name, Naruto again. He had demonstrated excellent analytical ability and had helped her progress far in such a short time. Her father had been surprised by their last training session. Besides that, he had been kinda cute. Knock knock. Hinata broke her thoughts as she heard her door open. Dressed in her sleepwear, Hanabi walked into the room and looked at Hinata. Sighing, the Hyuga heiress lifted her blanket. You can sleep with me tonight if you're scared of the storm. Hanabi smiled as she dove into her sister's bed and snuggled against her. Hinata couldn't help but smile as she remembered how her mother used to do this with her. Looking down, Hinata noticed that the young Hyuga had already fallen asleep. Shaking her head, she too rested her head as her thoughts of the blonde broke from her consciousness and sleep overtook her. Ooh oh. Itachi smiled as his Mungeku Sharingan began to spin at a frightening velocity. Was it time already? Was he calling him to do it now? Closing his eyes, Itachi released the final stage of the Sharingan and donned his Anbu clothes. He had been told to take care of all the civilians and his parents. Plus, he needed to sow his seed. But was his strong enough to be able to take care of the entire police force in just a couple of hours? Itachi shook his head as he felt the chakra from his eyes leak into his brain. He is immortal, he is almighty. You must obey him for power. Itachi closed his eyes as he clenched his fists. That's right. I need to trust him. He who made me who I am. He, who showed me my destiny. I'll do the deed. Madara Sensei. Ooh oh. Naruto walked through village as he rested his hands upon his head. Pulling down a couple strands of hair, he stared at the blonde color before frowning. He had always wanted dark colored hair like the Uchiha's since his bright hair would attract too much attention on the field. Closing his hands, Naruto smiled as he looked up at the moon. Rain sprinkled into his eyes as he felt his body feel warm despite the cold water this power that he had received from his two trusted friends. He would use it to protect them. Deciding to see if Shisui had come yet, Naruto swiftly ran towards the Uchiha district. Using the henge technique mid-sprint, 
he transformed into Sasuke. The boy had said that it would be okay to impersonate him once in a while if he wanted to come play. Grinning, Naruto pumped some chakra into his legs as he quickly disappeared from normal sight and used Shunshine. Ooh oh. Sasuke breathed heavily as he threw a shuriken at the target. He was supposed to have gone home two hours ago, but for some reason, he just felt like he had to learn the shuriken technique his brother had showed him. Pushing down the childish want to go home to his mother, he threw another set of shuriken. He would show his brother that he could take the title of Uchiha and make their father proud. Jumping, he let Kunai fly as six of them hit their target. The other two flew off into the distance though, causing him to swear and run after them. Just you wait Itachi Nisan. I'll show you what I practiced today. Ooh oh, wait. Please. Stop. Itachi watched with an uneasy feeling as he saw a sword fly through his aunt's neck. Looking down, he realized that it was his arm. Biting his lips, he jumped to the next person as he split their spine neatly in two. Blood showered over his figure as he looked around him. In just two hours, he had taken out nearly all of the civilians. Of course, it was no spectacular feat for a ninja like himself, but for some reason, he felt his arm getting heavier after each stroke. Was it guilt? A voice in the back of his mind laughed as it urged him forward. He needed to do this, to get rid of the disease. Just like his sensei said. Only then would he gain the ultimate power. Another scream pervaded the area as he raised an eyebrow. Was there still someone left? Turning into the nearby house, he stepped through the living room and saw a young girl shaking her mother's corpse. Kossin. Kossin. Why aren't you moving? Why don't your eyes open? Kossin. Itachi watched with an immovable expression as he stepped forward. The young girl finally took notice of him and yelled in hysteria. Please. My mom isn't waking up. Can you help? Her voice was silenced as another shower fell. Clenching his sword arm, Itachi walked out of the house, his Mangeku Sharingan spinning fiercely. Looking up at a nearby pole, he jumped up to it and looked over the Uchiha village. This magnificent village was nothing but decayed power now. The true might of the Uchiha had faded with Madara's disappearance. But. He would bring back that power. A familiar sensation hit Itachi though as his eyes suddenly honed in on someone. It was his brother no? that chakra belonged to. Widening his eyes, Itachi's heart began racing as he realized that Naruto was about to see the carnage that he had committed. He was about to jump down to stop him in reflex when that strange voice suddenly emerged from his head again. What are you doing? Why do you care about such a boy? He is simply a tool, nothing more. Itachi clenched his fists as he relaxed his shoulders. He had other things to do right now. He needed to set up the trap. The trap for his future light. Ooh oh. Naruto looked up at the moon as he felt a shadow pass over him. It didn't make sense that the entire town was this quiet. Even more, he could have sworn that there was someone standing on that pole a few seconds earlier. Rubbing his eyes, Naruto continued down the road and turned. Stopping, his eyes widened as he saw red, red, red. What the hell is going on? Genjutsu? Running over to the nearest person, he bent down as his hands touched the man's bloody neck. Kai. Kai. It was no use. This wasn't a genjutsu. Some sick person had actually done this. Closing his eyes, Naruto swore as he ran to Shisui's home. Praying that his brother was still away on his mission, Naruto jumped over the house's gate and threw open the door. The sight he saw was definitely not what he was expecting though. A man with long black hair was sitting cross-legged on a single tatami mat. His white kimono was perfectly untouched as if he did not belong in the world. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he brought out a kunai. Hey. Who are you, and where is Shisui Nisan? The man slowly stood up as he narrowed his eyes. I thought I told that kid to finish off the civilians. Looking down, the man paused as he saw the whisker marks on Naruto's face. Ah. So it's you. Naruto reached behind him for his chokudo as his sweat drops hit the floor. This man. Somehow, he could tell that he was unbelievably strong. There was something unnatural about him. Maybe it was his smell. He surprisingly had the strong scent of blood. You. You were the one who did this. Pulling out his chokudo all the way, Naruto unleashed a wave of chakra that washed over Shisui's home. What did you do to Shisui Nisan? The man laughed as he stepped forward. Do you want to see, young one, just what happened to your friend? Naruto remained silent as he watched the man's movements. Well then, let me show you. Naruto watched with a foreboding curiosity as he stared into the man's eyes. A strange Sharingan manifested inside the man's eyes, although the Tomoe were empty and connected. In fact, it looked like someone had gotten two Sharingans and placed them over each other. Suddenly, the strange circles began spinning at a frightful velocity, taking Naruto's own blue eyes in with them. And then, he was at the forest. Where? Where am I? The man appeared next to him as he pointed down towards a river. You're in the past. 
You wanted to see what happened to Shisui, didn't you? Naruto nodded dumbly as he peered over the hedge. He didn't buy this whole act, but it seemed so real. Even greater than the genjutsu that Itachi had often put on him. Surprised, he saw Itachi and Shisui talking a few meters below them. Something about the Sharingan or Mengeku? Stepping forward, he caught their words as a strange feeling of anxiety began to build up in his gut. Ah! I had a feeling that you would try this. Try what? Naruto looked between the two. You suspected me? Of course. I was always the smarter one. And my eyes are better than yours. Naruto listened on with a morbid feeling creeping up his spine. Shisui only made jokes when things got really bad. Itachi smiled as he pulled out a kunai. Then you won't blame me for doing this. You've had ample time for preparation. Shisui nodded as he activated his Sharingan. Ever since I met you, I knew that you were going to surpass any other Uchiha and achieve the impossible. I became your friend in hopes of changing you, but it seems as though I was too late. You were corrupted from the start. I'm sorry that it became like this. I really did care about our friendship. As for Naruto, I thank you for helping me take care of him. Itachi nodded solemnly. The only reason why this will work is because you have become my best friend. I truly do acknowledge you as a talented shinobi and a dependable person. Shisui took out a kunai as he let the moonlight bathe it in a glorious shine. If it is our destiny to fight, then I will fight. I have no delusions about who's stronger, but I guarantee you that I will not make it easy. Naruto shook his head as he sprinted towards them. Wait. Shisui Nisan. Itachi-san. Please don't fight, Naruto realized with horror though as a kunai passed straight through him as if he were a translucent being. Looking back, he saw Itachi aim his hand palm down towards the ground. Shisui, this is the gift I earned for entering the Anbu. I was able to see the famous copy in Kakashi's original technique, Reikiri. A giant blazing blue flashed around Itachi as a loud screeching noise resounded through the area. In an instant, Itachi flew towards Shisui, and everything turned black. Naruto rubbed his eyes as he looked around. What had happened to Shisui? What did Itachi do? Frantic, Naruto fell on his knees as he looked around the ground with his hands. Feeling something, he clenched it as he felt a moist texture meet his pale hands. Suddenly, light returned to him as he saw Itachi standing above him while Naruto's hand rested on the edges of a giant hole in Shisui's torso. Naruto's eyes widened with disbelief as he saw a black flame appear in Itachi's hand before fading back to nothing. Turning around, the Uchiha left the scene leaving Naruto alone with his dead brother. Shisui. Aniki. Hang on. Don't die. Madara silently watched as Naruto continued yelling at Shisui's lifeless face. Shisui. Looking around, Naruto's eyes became frenzied as he grabbed his head. No. This isn't real. Itachi-san would never do that. Shisui can't die. It's impossible. It's all a trick, a dream, a genjutsu. Turning around, Naruto yelled at the man. Stop this. This isn't real. This is Genjutsu. Madara smiled as he looked at the boy in amusement. Yes, you are correct. This is Genjutsu. But this is did happen in the past. One of the abilities of the Mengeku Sharingan is that I can look into the anyone's past as long as I make eye contact with them. Naruto shook his head as he looked at Shisui's body. No, you're lying. Madara smiled as the world began to warp back to Shisui's house. Believe what you want, demon. But why not ask the killer himself? It seems he's come to join us. Naruto froze as he felt a familiar presence behind him. Hello Naruto-kun. I see you found out the truth. Naruto slowly turned as he saw the apathetic face of Itachi. Seeing his bloody blade, Naruto's voice became hoarse as he weakly muttered. It. Was true? Itachi didn't bother to answer as he passed by Naruto and walked to Madara. I've just finished off the last Achiha, save my brother. He should be experiencing the effects of my Tsukiyomi right now. I made sure to make the adequate preparations. Madara smiled. Good, good. With this, you shall become my successor. After we finish off this demon, let us leave. I do not want my presence to be known to Konoha yet. Itachi nodded as he took out a kunai. He stopped however as he saw Naruto's quivering form. Itachi-san. I asked you a question. Itachi frowned as he listened. What I saw just now. Shisui's death. Was it all true? Did you really murder your best friend? Naruto's face was downcast as his fists clenched tightly by his side. Yes. Everything you saw happened. I killed my best friend and obtained the final level of the Sharingan, the Mengeku Sharingan. You saw my power early. A burst of red chakra flew through the house as the walls began to crack. Shut up. I'll kill you both. Beads of sweat began to form on Itachi's head as he felt his body weakening under the pressure. He had already used Tsukiyomi and Amaterasu today. If Naruto did fight, 
he wouldn't stand a chance. Both of them were interrupted though as Madara began laughing. You're interesting boy. Even though you suffered from the effects of my Sharingan, you still have energy to fight. That rage will help you grow even stronger. Join us and become even more powerful, Jinchuriki Naruto. I said shut up. Naruto unleashed another burst of energy before disappearing in an instant. Materializing from thin air, Naruto slashed at Itachi's arm, causing a large gash-like mark to appear. Disappearing again, he reappeared in front of him and did a horizontal slash, just barely short from cutting the man's jugular. Itachi gasped as he looked at the boy in slight fear. The speed he had was tremendous. In that one swipe, he had also attacked six, no seven times with his fist. It would be dangerous if he prolonged the fight. Holding his breath, Itachi felt the last of his reserves go as he called upon the Mengeku once again. Looking into Naruto's eyes, he yelled. Sukiyomi. Naruto looked around as he suddenly appeared in a giant world with discolored lights. Genjutsu? Struggling, he realized that he was tied onto a cross. Suddenly, Itachi's form materialized in front of him. This is my world, Sukiyomi. From now, until 72 hours later. You will have this katana run through your body. Itachi reared his sword back and was about to attack when he suddenly found that he couldn't move. With shock, his arm suddenly became bound to a wooden cross as Naruto stood in front of him. What? How are you? Naruto looked up at Itachi as his eyes brightly showed in the discolored light. How can you have? The Mangekyu? Ooh oh. Madara watched with interest as he saw the boy struggle in his mind. Victims under Tsukiyomi always seem to go under a catatonic stupor. It really was quite amusing to see their frozen faces. It was only a matter of time before they returned and the boy regressed into the corners of his mind. However, something quickly went wrong. Madara's eyes widened as red chakra began to leak out of the boy. What surprised him most though, was that the chakra was slowly turning darker, changing from deep crimson to finally black. Black chakra? There's no such thing. Out of all the colors of chakra, only the god Izanami, the one who gave birth to Amaterasu, Susano, and Tsukiyomi, was said to have had black chakra. Could this be the legendary? The elder Uchiha's thoughts were interrupted once again as he saw the situation reverse. Itachi's face began to look troubled as the boy relaxed. And then, Naruto opened his eyes, revealing a black cross in red surrounded by multiple kanji. The Mangekyu? Madara froze as his mind tried to think of any possible reason. Not only was the boy not an Uchiha, but he had even managed to obtain the legendary Sharingan. The Makaz Mangekyu. The Genjutsu ended as Itachi fell to the ground and Naruto focused his eyes on Madara. The boy looked as if he had no power left though, as all the black chakra seemed to fade and disappear back into him. Moreover, the Mangekyu had regressed to the normal Sharingan, with only one Tomoe in each eye. He turned my Genjutsu against me. Forgive me. Madara nodded coolly as he walked over to Naruto. However, the inside of his mind was screaming for the boy's death. It seems that it was a mistake to make the QB attack Konoha. To think that such a powerful being other than myself would be born. I will rectify that mistake now with this day. Pulling back his hand, Madara was about to plunge it through Naruto's heart when multiple chakra signals appeared around them. Looking around, Madara muttered a silent curse as he walked back over to Itachi. Secrecy is our top priority right now. We must leave quickly. Itachi looked at Naruto with slight hesitation before asking. And Nar. I mean... The boy, Madara smiled wickedly as he helped support Itachi. We will let him take the blame for our deed today. Looking back at Naruto, Madara smiled. It will be interesting to see how you grow. I will be watching and studying you in the future. Making foreign hand seals, Madara and Itachi then disappeared in a flash just as three Konoha nins broke into the building. Halt. Who are you? Naruto slowly turned as his Sharingan dimly glittered in the light. Oh my god. It's the demon. He has the Sharingan. He must have killed the Uchiha. Naruto felt his body lose its energy as he struggled to understand what they were saying. For some reason, he felt so tired. He just wanted to go to sleep and, he's weak. Kill the demon now. We will take revenge for the Konoha police force. Naruto struggled to stay conscious as he saw three shadows loom closer and closer. A vicious voice suddenly snarled from the back of his mind as a kunai was about to slice his neck. What are you doing brat? Move now. You're going to get killed. Naruto's head snapped up as his eyes registered the movements of the Anbu in slow motion. Face impassive, his eyes gleamed a manic red as black crosses took the place of his pupils. Mengeku. Ooh oh. Thirty Anbu stood outside Uchiha Shisui's home as they waited in apprehension for the return of their comrades. They had sensed a lot of chakra activity from this area, so they hoped that the perpetrator and murderer was still there. Looking in the cabin, 
They fidgeted as they heard shouting, Captain. The Odwa captain looked over at a newer recruit as he stepped forward. Those three will be okay, right? The captain nodded as he looked at the house. Those men are some of my strongest ninja. All of them are highly skilled. Nothing short of a demon will ever bring them. Boom. The captain paused mid-sentence as his eyes widened and his mouth fell open. The entire house suddenly exploded in a giant vortex of black flames. If he hadn't felt the intense heat, he would have thought that it was more of a tornado than just fire. It was like seeing the entire fury of Kami himself explode on a single patch of land. C.A. Captain. There's someone walking out of that thing. The captain squinted his eyes as he saw a small figure step out of the flaming vortex. Impossible. It's the QB container. The Anbu all took out their swords as they gulped in nervousness. One of them suddenly cried out as he jumped towards the child. Wait. The captain tried to stop him but it was too late. As soon as the man approached him, Naruto faded out of view with an entire line of Anbu chopped into pieces behind him. Despite the blazing fire, the Anbu captain was able to hear the soft words that the boy spoke. Don't get in my way. I'm going to find them. The boy's face was completely blank and devoid of emotion. Despite his years of battle, the man couldn't help but shiver. His pale visage was half shattered by black flame and chakra. The sharp contrast seemed to make him seem translucent, especially in the bright moonlight. But those eyes. Those crimson eyes seemed almighty, omniscient, and almost, cursed. Like a ghost, he seemed out of place there, as if he were some spectral being that had come from the heavens, or the deepest reaches of hell. Turning his head, Naruto made eye contact with the captain for a split second before finally disappearing into the night. The ten Anbu near the captain simply watched him leave as they thanked Kami that their lives had been spared. Captain, the young Anbu from before ran up to him as he breathed heavily. We tried all the water and earth jutsu we had, but the fire won't go out. Thankfully though, it seems to be contained in that small area and isn't spreading. The captain nodded as he looked at the teen. I see. I will report this to the Hokage. The Anbu saluted him as he disappeared towards the tower. The Anbu watched in fear as the eternal black flames of hatred seemed to favor the darkness. As if it were reaching towards the heavens, this will of fire appeared tainted, as if it were the essence of evil itself. The Anbu, the all seasoned warriors, could not help but fear this imposing flame as their own hearts cowered in the shadows of its sable figure. Ooh oh, what? Usamaki Naruto? The Anbu captain winced as he saw the Hokage stand up. He had never seen the sun daime so distressed. Rather than calming him down, it seemed to have the opposite effect as he now felt even more fear. If the Hokage was this worried, this is truly a horrible event. Where is young Sasuke? He is resting in the Konoha General Hospital under intense medical treatment. He was hurt, not physically. But he showed signs of extreme mental distress. The Hokage gravely nodded. And you're sure that no one else was there? The captain hesitated for a second before shaking his head. When we found Ichiha Sasuke in his home, he was laying on the ground while muttering his brother's name over and over again. Itachi-kun was murdered also? No. I do not think so. We did not find his body. But more than that, Sasuke seemed to repeating his brother's name with fear and. The Hokage raised an eyebrow as he waited for the captain to finish his sentence. And hates her. I have reason to believe that Ichiha Itachi was the mastermind this evening. The Hokage felt a small glimmer of hope for the young Namikaze air as he looked to the captain. What do you mean? This is just a theory of course, but when we arrived at the Uchiha settlement, we sensed three powerful chakra signatures. However, when we arrived, only the boy's was left. Yes, the boy was a murderer as he slaughtered my men, but his eyes seemed to hold a bitter sadness. It wasn't something that you'd see in a mass murderer's face. I simply think that there's more to this than meets the eye. The Hokage gravely sighed as he rubbed his temples. I would like to believe you Tenzu, but I cannot do anything at this point. The fact remains that Izumaki Naruto murdered 23 men and holds a dangerous ability. I will try to have Jiraiya work on the flame. But for now, I do not think that it will be an immediate threat to the village. And the boy's status? The Hokage pulled out a paper as he began writing. Please put this in the bingo book. Thank you for your report Tenzu. Get some well-deserved rest. Tenzu nodded as he took the paper. Standing up, he walked out of the office and left the Hokage to his grief. Naruto. This is my fault. Weeping. The old man looked outside as the rain began to fall. Your present, the eternal black flame, shall be my constant reminder. I wish you luck in the outside world, Namikaze Naruto. Ooh oh, Kakashi. Did you see this? Kakashi looked up from his novel as he saw Asuma barge into his apartment. Eh? What are you talking about? There's a new addition to the bingo book. Kakashi waved him away as he went back to his book. Oh, is that all? There are additions being made every day. This one is only 8 years old. Kakashi put his book down as he walked over to Asuma. 
Now that is interesting. Ooh oh, Zabuza-sama. Please come here. Zabuza walked over to his young protege. What are you looking at? It seems Konoha has sent Kiri information regarding a new SS class ninja in the bingo book. SS class? You don't see that every day. Haku smiled as he looked at the picture. Hey, he's even younger than me. Zabuza smirked as he read the boy's name. Interesting. Bounty of 10 million yen. Ooh oh. Kabuto walked over to his master's room as he entered the door quietly. Orochimaru was sitting down by his window looking out into the rain as he had a strange smile on his face. Orochimaru-sama, Akabuto. It worked. It worked. Kabuto frowned as he readjusted his glasses. What worked? Orochimaru-sama. Tossing a small booklet at him, Orochimaru smiled as he looked back out at the rain. My ultimate experiment. Kabuto's eyes widened as he looked at the picture. This is, Uo, Uzumaki Naruto of the Jogun. Special features, Black Chakra and an unknown Sharingan. Considered lethal and highly dangerous. SS rank criminal of Konoha, to be killed on sight. Responsible for the entire massacre of the Uchiha family. Kakashi closed the book as he shook his head in disbelief. What is this world coming to? Uo, Naruto looked over the hills as his eyes saw through the snow. He was draped in a giant black cloak with his yellow hair barely peeking under the hood. His dull blue eyes searched for light as he felt his body becoming numb. He was alone now. No. He had always been alone. An illusion, now destroyed by these hated eyes, showed him the cruelty of his gift. This curse. This power. Trudging through the snow, he entered Kiri as he felt his last bond to Konoha break under the harsh wind. Itachi or Madara. It didn't matter anymore. He would find the truth for himself. With these evil eyes. Chapter 4 Deception. One week after the Uchiha massacre, it was a nice, calm night in Konoha. Despite the towering pillar of black fire overshadowing the village, things had settled down. The Hokage was doing his routine paperwork and the ninja of the village were already growing accustomed to not having the Uchiha police force around. Yes, in times of turmoil, a ninja village needed to be able to adapt. However, the tranquil peace that had settled into the Hokage's office that night would soon be disrupted as an urgent messenger suddenly broke into the Hokage's office with all the force of a tempest coming in with him. Hokage-sama. Uchiha Sasuke has started to show signs of consciousness. The Chounin messenger panted heavily as he gripped the side of his ribs with one hand. The Hokage's head flew up from his work as he shoved everything aside and immediately began walking towards the hospital. Direct me towards young Sasuke's room. Surprised at the speed with which the venerable old leader had reacted, the messenger looked stupidly at the Hokage before rushing forward to lead the way. Hi, Uo. Sasuke jerked up from his bed as he felt his muscles scream from having been in an atrophic state for so long. Opening his eyes widely, his eyes caught several blurry figures standing in front of him. Closing his eyes and concentrating, he opened them again as his retinas finally got used to the light. In front of him were several ninja and the Hokage, a surprise in itself. Looking around, an irrational thought, no doubt a product of just regaining consciousness, made him expect his brother to be in the crowd but he quickly realized the folly of such a thought. Clearing his throat, the Hokage spoke first. Sasuke-kun, do you remember anything that happened? Sasuke seemingly ignored the man's question as he looked out the window. It was already nighttime. Keeping his eyes affixed on a rusty old lamp post outside of his window, he quietly spoke. How long was I out for, Hokage-sama? The Hokage leaned back into his chair. Seven days. Sasuke whipped his head towards him as he felt his muscles groan with protest. Seven days. Did you catch him? Did you kill him yet? The Hokage and all the ninja in the room visibly tensed as they looked at him cautiously. Exactly, who are you referring to? Pausing a bit, the Hokage's voice shrank as he felt his courage start to fail him. Are you talking about Naruto? Sasuke stopped as he looked at the Hokage in puzzlement. Naruto? I meant my brother, or rather, the man who was my brother. That bastard, Itachi. The ninja froze as the Hokage felt his heart flutter in brief hope. However, his happiness was placated as his role as the leader of the village overtook him. Itachi? Are you saying that Itachi was the one responsible for the Uchiha massacre? Sasuke's eyes narrowed dangerously as his voice took on a sharpened edge. Yes. That murderer even killed our own parents in front of me. After that, he used some dujutsu, causing me to relive. Images of the townspeople screaming in pain flashed into his mind as he saw his aunt, uncle, friends, and family all die under his brother's sword. A young girl, begging for her mother's life was silenced by the cold steel. Each scream and spray of blood tore his own, fragile heart to pieces. Eyes widening, Sasuke grabbed his head as he tried to force the images out of his mind. The other ninja in the room, including the Hokage, 
suddenly stood up in fear that the boy would revert back to his comatose condition. Taking a cautious step forward, the Hokage lightly placed his hand on the boy's shoulder. The effect was immediate. Sasuke's erratic breathing became normal again as he felt his body's parasympathetic nervous system kick in and relax his taut muscles. Having calmed him down, the Hokage went back to his chair and looked at Sasuke carefully for any other signs of distress. One of the ninja in the room, unaffected by the whole ordeal, turned to the Hokage as he raised his voice. Sir, it might be the demon. A glare from the Hokage made him pause. I mean, the boy known as Naruto under disguise. Sasuke looked up at the man in confusion as he turned to the Hokage. Why do you guys keep bringing up Naruto? Was he involved in the massacre too? A dark fear suddenly gripped his insides as he wondered about the fate of his blonde rival. It wasn't like they were best friends, but it was incredibly difficult not to be fond of said blonde after meeting him. Moreover, Sasuke and he had developed an understanding and they had learned a lot from each other. At that point, he didn't know how he would be able to forgive himself if Itachi had somehow involved Naruto too. The Hokage thought for a second before sighing. If anyone had the right to know, it was the sole survivor of the Uchiha clan. Listen carefully Sasuke-kun. What I'm about to tell you must not leave this room. Approximately seven days ago, Uchiha Shisui's house was set on fire by Naruto, and about 20 Anbu were murdered by him. We have no direct evidence that Naruto was the one to massacre the entire village, but our men tell us that he had the Sharingan. At the moment, we believe that Naruto stole the Sharingan from Uchiha Shisui and... That's bullshit. The Hokage paused as he saw Sasuke glare at them angrily. It's true, I never would have believed that my own brother would have been capable of doing such a thing, but I know that Naruto would never have hurt Shisui-san, let alone kill him. They were closer brothers than Itachi and I ever were. This has to be a plan set by Itachi. The Naruto I know, as strong as he is, would never betray anyone he cares about. Even if he did do something bad, he was probably tricked by that man. Can't you see you're falling for his plan? The Hokage became still as he felt his heart reach out to the boy. He desperately wanted to believe that Naruto was blameless, that he could still be the hero he was meant to be. But cold logic proved otherwise. Naruto had, regardless of any setup, killed 20 Konohanin and had run away. Though he was not a ninja, his time as a private student of Itachi and Shisui had made him dangerous. Either way, Naruto was a weapon. Though it pained him to think of him as that, Konoha had unleashed. I see. We do not have any evidence supporting your ideas. It's the truth. The Hokage cleared his throat. But we will continue to investigate it. And remember, anything we discussed will never leave this room. Rest now, and the council will call you after you have healed to ask you some more questions. The Hokage and all the ninja left the room, leaving Sasuke alone with his thoughts. How many more lives will you ruin? It's over. Our bond has broken and has become my new path. For myself, our family, our friends, and Naruto, I will kill you with my own hands. As an Avenger. Ooh oh. Hinata growled to herself as she threw her shirt at the laundry basket. Pulling on her sleeping robes, she angrily looked at the black coat hanging precariously over her bed before shoving her head into her pillow. She had waited all day for that stupid blonde boy to show up. The audacity. Frowning, she closed her eyes as she relaxed her fists. Anger soon faded as her true feelings emerged. Rejection and loneliness were not good feelings. Not knowing what to think, she flipped around and pulled the covers up to her chin. Bakagaki. Stupid brat. Ooh oh. Naruto walked around town as his eyes looked around in slight wonder. It was so different from Konoha here, or rather, the people were different. Everyone seemed focused on their own tasks and the air had a chilly feel to it. The fishermen all had scarred and rough faces, their muscular arms proof of their hard work. The children, instead of playing with each other, were throwing kunai at the carcass of a pig. Everyone kept to themselves and showed total dedication to their work. Closing his eyes, he took in the salty atmosphere as he felt his body shiver from the new feeling. It was a strange sort of peace, the fact that no one was looking at him. No glares, no attention, no, nothing. Here, he was just a passing existence that held no meaning. His peace was short-lived however, as a few shouts suddenly came from his left. Twitching an eyebrow. He turned towards the commotion and activated his Sharingan. Though it was only level 1, it still helped him take in observations with much more clarity. There appeared to be three boys and a girl with one of the boys hiding behind the ladder. He hadn't had much interaction with children his age, but he could tell that the dispute was about to escalate into a fight soon. Well, it's none of my business anyways. However, despite his thoughts, his feet seemed compelled to move him towards the dispute. Stop it. You know the academy forbids you to pick on weaklings. Naruto smirked a little as he heard that the boy behind the girl mumble a little about being called a weakling by his savior. 
So you're going to defend this kid? He's the one that's at fault. He should have known that you don't get in Hirasama's way. You said your name was Natsumi? Well, in case you didn't know, I'm the number one ninja at the academy. The girl known as Natsumi glared at them. Well, that's still no excuse to beat on weaklings idiot. A third boy then spoke up as he pulled a kunai out of his pocket. Well, why don't we decide this now? Since you're more like a boy than a girl anyway, let's have a fight. Looking to the other boy next to him, he grinned. I'll take care of her, Hira. You just make sure you teach that guy a lesson after. At this point, Naruto turned away as he lost interest. If they were going to continue to be loud, he would just find a quieter place elsewhere. The voices behind him were eventually drowned by the distance and the sea, and he finally found a nice little bench in front of a shoe-selling shop to sit on. Taking off his hood, he let the sea breeze claim his hair as his golden locks swayed. Closing his eyes, he let his chakra move around inside his body as he tried to make sense of what had happened last week. The last seven days had left him no time to think since he had been busy trying to survive the cold winter dunes of Kiri's borders. Unfortunately, he had only a black overcoat and even his traditional shinobi garb was slightly tattered. That meant that he had to use more chakra to keep his body at an acceptable range. Leaning back, he placed a hand over his right eye before sighing. He understood that some way or another, he had obtained a strange Sharingan known as the Mengeku. He had wanted to ask the QB about it, but the demon fox had turned incredibly silent the moment they had left Konoha. He knew that they were powerful though. The illusion Itachi had put on him was countered. And that black fire, but these eyes seemed more like a curse than a gift. Every time he saw those crimson eyes, he thought of Shisui, Itachi, and that man, Madara. It reminded him of betrayal, of happiness, of murder. Shaking his head, he decided to go for a walk in the village to clear his thoughts. From what he had learned from Shisui, Kiri was continuously shrouded with mist from the nearby seas and ocean. Known as having some of the most vicious ninja, they were a small village overall that had only survived due to their ferocity and courage. Notorious of them all were the seven swordsmen, each thought to possess the powers of demons themselves. The academy trained future ninja at a young age, ranging from six to eight. Overall, they followed a strict and severe policy. Of course, such a policy was needed for survival. Walking down a myriad of bridges to abate some boredom, Naruto stopped in front of a large building that stood as the ninja academy. Obviously, the funds of the village went towards the said institution. Built from steel frame and reinforced with refined metal and plaster, the building towered well above the rest of the village and shot up even higher than the Mizukage Tower. Feeling a sense of awe fill his being, he was about to step inside the courtyard of the school when he suddenly heard some crying from his left. Curious, he stepped towards the noise and found the girl and boy from before, the latter sniffling like mad with the girl condoling him. S.H. It's okay Azawari. You just need to pretend that there's no pain. Naruto watched silently as he saw the young boy nurse a bruised cheek. In his opinion, the girl looked way worse as she had several cuts, no doubt from the kunai that the boy had been sporting earlier, on her arms. And from the way she seethed every time she moved her torso, it was obvious that she had sustained a serious injury to her ribs. The girl suddenly turned though, with surprise celerity, and positioned her body in a fighting position. Who are you? Naruto looked at them apathetically as he pulled off his hood. No one. I just heard some noise and wondered what it was. Forgive me, I'll take my leave now. Turning to go, he suddenly stopped though as he heard the boy begin to cry again. Sighing, he stepped over to the child and looked him fiercely in the eye. The girl simply sat in silent stupor as she looked between the two. Listen kid. Crying won't get you anywhere. You're training to be a ninja aren't you? Well in battle, there are things much worse than a simple bruise on your cheek. You'll wish for death sometimes and find that even that will escape you. Every time you sleep you'll feel the psychological agony of death floating around you. In time, you may lose a finger, an arm, a leg, or even your heart. So grow up now while you still can. The boy stared at Naruto in shock and slight admiration as he felt his runny nose go. Taking a slight breather, Naruto stood up as he closed his eyes. It was not like him to get so riled up. Calming himself, he decided to be at least a little cordial. So, who are you guys? The spiky-haired brown-haired boy eagerly answered first as he raised his hand. I'm Sasaki Azawari. I want to be a cool ninja like one of the seven swordsmen, Aniki. Older brother, Naruto raised his eyebrow at the tone of respect before looking at the long black-haired girl. My name's Gojiro Natsumi. I've been Azawari's friend since birth. This coward doesn't like to fight, but he's actually not that bad if he becomes serious. But besides that, who are you? I thought you were a ghost before, but now that I see you up close, you just seem like a sun-deprived child. You don't look that old to me yet something about you. Naruto ran a hand through his hair before sighing. 
my age and name are of no concern to you. I merely heard you two and fell victim to curiosity, both Natsumi and Azawari pouted as they frowned. Eh, that's not nice, Naruto mentally swore. It was just his luck to run into an admiring crybaby and a tomboy. Shaking his head, he looked at the two one more time. Well, what are your ages? The boy answered eagerly. We're both twelve, and we'll be graduating this year. Naruto resisted the urge to slap himself in the head. These kids were about to graduate? Wasn't Kiri supposed to have the toughest ninja curriculum of all the ninja villages? Letting out a low breath of air, he sighed as he shook his head. He guessed that he could at least give his surname and age to them. My name's Naruto. The two kids nodded eagerly as they urged him on. And I'm eight. Ooh oh, Haku, do you feel that presence? The young child nodded as she looked up at her caretaker. Yes. However, it is non-hostile and moving with two weaker chakras. I will go and scout out this possible threat. Zabuza smirked as he patted her head. Good boy. Haku smiled as she placed her hunter nin mask on. Boy or girl, it didn't matter to her. She was Zabuza's weapon and would protect him until she died. Gender made no difference. Tying back her sash, she made some seals with her left hand as the wind slowly revolved around her. And then, as a leaf fell slowly from a nearby tree, she disappeared. Ooh oh. Hey, why are you guys following me? Naruto looked back at the two as he walked at an increasingly fast pace. We don't have anything else to do. Came Mazawari's happy reply. Naruto sighed as he felt his annoyance slowly ebb away. It was nostalgic of his time with Shisui and. Shaking his head, he pushed those thoughts out of his head as he clenched his fists. You know. I'm a killer. The girl and boy looked at him seriously for a second before bursting into laughter. But 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 you're eight. Naruto glared icily at them as a cold wind suddenly blew from him to the rest of the village. Store owners suddenly shivered as they looked up at the sky for signs of snow. Speaking harshly and sarcastically, Naruto's voice became as guttural as possible for an eight-year-old. And how is that relevant? Azawari and Natsumi looked at each other for a second before bursting into another set of laughter. Apparently, icy demeanors had no effect on them. Ah, you're funny Aniki. Naruto's eyebrow twitched with annoyance as he repeated the name. Aniki? The boy smiled as he wrapped an arm around Naruto's neck. The blonde's first impulse was to quickly use his sword to cut off said arm, but his mental control reigned supreme. Yeah, Aniki. Despite your age, you seem kinda smart. Naruto groaned as he continued to walk forward. He preferred the crybaby Azawari over the happy go lucky one. From the bushes, Haku watched with fascination as she took notes. The blonde boy was obviously skilled, his gait and body posture told her volumes, and his eyes had been constantly searching the area for any threats ever since she had started watching him. However, her main skills were observation and reconnaissance, even some of the greatest ninjas weren't able to pinpoint her exact location. Watching carefully for a few more minutes, she frowned as a strange beacon kept going off in her head. It was almost as if she had seen him before. But for some reason, she just couldn't remember exactly where she had seen that blonde hair and light blue eyes. May I ask what you are doing, Hunter-san? Haku suddenly turned as she pulled out several senbone needles in reflex. She had been detected? How? Shifting her eyes. She saw the blonde still walking down the avenue with the boy and girl. Bunshine. Naruto stood in front of her on a thin branch, just four feet away from her, with his eyes watching her every move. I suggest you explain what you were doing. Haku regained composure as she stood up straight. With slight satisfaction, she noticed that she was a few inches taller than him. We felt a large chakra in this area and I was sent to investigate. What is your name and business in Kiri? Naruto frowned as he tried to see her eyes to tell if she were speaking the truth. Trying to open up an opportunity, he replied coolly. My name is of no importance. I am simply a wanderer. Haku smiled at his taunt as she crossed her arms. A wanderer at such an age? You must be at most eight years old. Naruto, in turn, smirked as he too crossed his arms. The same goes for you, Hunter-san. From your voice and height, I'd say you were about my age. Haku felt her muscles dense as she continued to try and remember where she had seen that face. That pallid complexion and sorrowful blue eyes. Well, if you won't talk, I guess this conversation's over. Turning to leave, he was about to dismiss himself when Haku suddenly stopped him. You. I've seen you before. Though I can't exactly. Haku's eyes widened as she suddenly recalled his face in the bingo book. You're that new addition, Naruto of the Jogan. Naruto's eyes shifted to curiosity as he sensed the hunter nin's chakra climb. What do you mean, of the Jogan? And I'm in the bingo book? Haku gulped as she decided for a tactical retreat. Alone, she probably wouldn't be able to face such a threat. She needed to report this to Zabuza-sama as soon as possible to Mingekyu, Fubin Maburoshi, Mingekyu, 
evil vision. Haka paused in her speech as she suddenly felt a piece of her mind wrestle. It was a foreign feeling that left her bewildered for a few seconds. Regaining her thought process, she glared at him while making some hand seals in preparation. What did you just do? She bit back her next sentence though as her heart began to race with fear. Those eyes. Cold and merciless, they were more like a demon's than anything else. She began to pant with exhaustion as she tried to look away from him, but found that she was held in place by its mysterious glow instead. Was this, the Joggin? Two crosses of black in a red backdrop with a multiple seals surrounding them in a perfect circle stared back at her as the boy frowned. With the sharp contrast of his crimson eyes and pale skin, he looked more like an Akuma now. I simply looked into your memories. You've been lying to me, Hunter San. You actually follow a missing nin, Zabuza I believe. Brought out of her stupor by her mentor's name, she bit on her lip to regain some control and raised her chakra to dangerous heights. If you try to hurt him, Naruto shook his head as he suddenly appeared behind her. Placing a hand on her shoulder, he squeezed a pressure point, causing her to unconsciously relax. It wouldn't do for you to attract attention since we're both criminals. Haku smiled as she stood upright. Indeed, you are correct. However, it seems my grip slipped and I missed my chance to interrogate you further. Naruto frowned as he finally noticed the senbone lodged deep in his shoulder. This ninja was strong, despite being so young. Although, I'm surprised that you haven't disappeared right away. Taking off her mask, she placed it on her hip as she stepped a couple of feet back. You must have plenty of chakra to spare if your clones are able to sustain injury for that long. Naruto showed a shadow of a smile on his face as he too stepped away to a nearby tree branch. I see. I learned much from you. Thank you Hunter-san, you have been most helpful. I mean you and your master no harm, so please let me be. Otherwise, Naruto's eyes suddenly shifted into the normal Sharingan, though it only had one Tomoe in each. I'll have to take care care of you. With that extra use of chakra, the clone finally dispersed in a plume of smoke, leaving Haku alone on the treetop. Taking a slight breather from the whole ordeal, she focused her chakra as she sped towards Zabuza. She needed to tell him of this immediately. Ooh oh. Naruto frowned as all the information that the clone had learned came into his mind. So he was ASS class criminal? It would be troublesome but, continuing to ignore Azawari and Natsumi's continuous babble, he felt the lower ends of his mind smile sinisterly. Let them come. Ooh oh. We will retreat for now. You are not as strong as I want you to be yet, and I don't want to risk losing my newest weapon. Hakubota Zabuza began walking away. We will leave Kiri once again and come after this, Naruto figure once you become stronger than me. At that time, we will collect his bounty and I will achieve my dream. Haku nodded as she picked up their items and ran after him. Taking a short look back, she smiled for a brief second before picking up the pace. Ooh oh. Naruto looked up at the sky as he felt the moon and stars watch him with weary eyes. It seemed as though even the celestial beings feared him. Shifting his head to the side, he watched the ocean with a strange sense of peace. That annoying girl and annoying boy had finally gone home, leaving him to relax under the night sky on the docks. Raising his left hand up towards the moon, he frowned as he saw a long black tattoo running from the middle of his shoulder up to his right clavicle. That wasn't there before. Looking at it carefully, he noted with slight interest that it was shaped like a bird with a sword coming out of its mouth. Activating his Sharingan to try and detect any abnormalities, he noticed a strange aura surrounding it. Taking a deep breath, he stood up and sent an immense amount of chakra to his eyes forming the Mangekyu. Analyzing the tattoo with his new eyes, the result was almost spontaneous. The black tattoo's aura suddenly flared to life as a black flame suddenly enveloped his entire figure. Screaming in pain, he felt his skin peel, repair itself, and peel again as the crosses in his eyes became circles due to their accelerated rotation. And then, the black fire suddenly disappeared from his body as he fell into unconsciousness, missing the two voices calling out to him from the background. Ooh oh, where am I? The last thing I remember was a black flame covering me and Naruto softly groaned as he tried to move his body up. The surface he had been sleeping on was surprisingly soft. Looking around, he tried to get into a more defensive position as he noted that he was sleeping in a home. Judging from the multiple cup ramen and littered trash bags, he realized that it was most likely a man's home. Standing up despite his body's protests, he calmly sent chakra to his eyes to dilate his pupils. Taking in more light, the dark room became as bright as day allowing him to maneuver through the trash-filled halls and step into a room that had a chakra presence in it. Realizing that his sword and other weapons were absent from his person, he clenched his fists as he placed his hand on the door. Turning the doorknob, he ran inside and grabbed a nearby pole. Flashing over to the person who was laying on the bed, he pointed it at his throat and was about to stab it through his jugular when he suddenly paused. It was the boy from before, 
The crybaby slash annoying one. What was his name? A-G-H-H. Naruto looked down at the now awake Kazawari who was currently staring up at Naruto in fear. What the hell are you doing? Oh my god, I was about to wet my pants. Naruto sighed as he walked towards what he supposed to be the light switch and turned it on. Why am I here? Azawari rubbed his eyes as he pointed outside. Well, after we left you alone, Natsumi and I wanted to see what you would do. So we came back to find you. But you suddenly collapsed on the pier so we brought you to my house. It sure beats sleeping outside, right? Naruto nodded stiffly as he felt his body relax a little. I see. And you live alone? Azawari grinned. Well, I have a dad. My mom passed away a couple years ago. My dad's out on a long-term mission now though. He hasn't been here for over three years. Naruto refrained from calling it a case of abandonment and simply nodded in fake sympathy. He was about to give a word of thanks for providing some shelter though, when he suddenly felt a multitude of chakras flare a fair distance away from the house. Azawari. You shouldn't have brought me in here. A, hey, it's fine. Natsumi helped me carry you. So it was no big deal. Naruto forgot himself as he quickly turned to Azawari. You mean... That girl's in here too? Azawari nodded as he pointed outside. In the opposite room. She was too tired to go back home so she just crashed here. Naruto swore as he felt the group of chakra moving faster towards the house. How did they find him? Paling, he suddenly remembered his little incident with the tattoo. At that moment, he had unleashed an excessive amount of chakra in the form of his black flames. Anyone knowing what to search for would have felt it miles away. Clenching his fists until they turned white, he barked at Azawari. Where are my weapons? I need to leave immediately. Azawari scratched his head as he looked around. Um. They should be in your room. But why do you have to leave right now? Do you need to go to the bathroom? With a slight pause of hesitation, he then added. With your weapons? Naruto glared at him before lowering his voice. I am ISS class ranked criminal from the hidden village of Konoha. At this very moment, there are at least seven high-level Anbu coming after me. At my present state, I would have a hard time fending off just five of them. I need to leave now to avoid bringing you and that girl into the fight. Azawari laughed as he patted Naruto's shoulder. Ah. Continuing with the joke Suniki? Ha ha ha, you're too much. Naruto stared at Azawari with cold, unrelenting eyes, before turning to go to his room. Regardless of what you wish to believe, this is where we part. Pausing for a brief second. He bit his lip. Thank you for before. With that, he quickly sprinted to his room to equip his items. Seeing the blonde disappear into the corridor, Azawari ran into Natsumi's room and quickly turned on the lights. Natsumi, Naruto's leaving right now. He says that there are ninja after him. Natsumi yawned as she rubbed her eyebrows. Wah? Did he have a bad dream or something? Azawari grew serious as his voice became low. No. But there's something definitely coming. This may cause some deviations. Hearing her friend turn serious, she nodded. I see. Grabbing his shoulder, she looked him in the eye. If things get dangerous, don't just rely on it. Even if you'll end up losing the target. Azawari nodded gravely as he ran to Naruto's room. Sighing, Natsumi clipped up her hair before jumping out of the room's window. Concentrating, she felt seven extremely strong chakras rush towards their position. We should have figured that there would be other people after him. Either way, we won't let them have him, even if the opponents are Anbu. Jumping down from the roof, she ran towards her house with quick bursts of chakra. However, if someone had been paying close attention, they would have noticed that the wounds from the day before had already disappeared. Ooh oh. Naruto finished strapping his chokudo horizontally to his lumbar region and threw his black cloak around his body. Walking briskly out the door into the open night sky, he was suddenly met by Azawari's smiling face. What do you want? Azawari continued to smile as he flexed his arms. So, how many should I take on? Naruto groaned in annoyance as he felt the Anbu's presence become imminent. I don't have time for your jokes. Hurry up and hide in your house. This is no time for bravado. Azawari nodded as he looked to the trees. Ah. I know. But Aniki, you don't need to face this alone. Naruto looked at him incredulously. Are you telling me that you're going to fight? Azawari smiled as he shook his head. Of course, not. I'm going to go hide and root for you in the background. Naruto resisted the urge to slap himself in the head for the umpteenth time as he drew his sword. I don't have time for this. Ignoring his muscle pain and chakra exhaustion, Naruto pulled his cloak over his head and flew into the trees. Azawari stood there in silence, looking at the area where Naruto had gone into. If he was right, the fight would take place about three miles from here in the middle of the forest. Flipping out a bingo book, Azawari grinned as he placed a large check mark next to Naruto's picture. 
It was finally time to put this plan into action. After all this time, he would finally. Ooh oh, Team Alpha, are you in the precinct? Roger. The structure is in view. Orders? The Odwa captain frowned as he hung back on a tall bamboo tree. He had taken three squads with him for a routine check on Konoha borders when they had all felt the flare from the Kyuubi's chakra. As veterans of the attack eight years ago, all of them had immediately recognized the unique, evil feel of the power and had realized at once that the Jinchuriki was nearby. Sending a messenger to Konoha to report their findings, he had taken the liberty to go after the boy first to make sure that his escape was not an option. But even with the highly trained Jown and around him, he couldn't help but feel that something was horribly wrong. Speaking softly into his headset, he quickly whispered again, Team Alpha, Team Beta, are you in position? Hi, Team Alpha is in position. Hi, Team Beta is. The captain immediately frowned as he listened for more. Light static shot into his ear. Biting his lip, the Anbu leader was about to send out his first team when another stream of static entered his other ear. Team Alpha? Hearing no response, the captain swore before motioning to the men beside him. The target is SS ranked. He is to be brought in alive for interrogation. Use any means necessary to bring him in. Hi. Following normal Anbu procedure, all of them vanished into their respective scouting spots and waited for even the slightest movement. Down below, disguised as a cracked rock via a henge and a clone, Naruto waited patiently as he used his ears to spot their positions. The first two teams had been laugh. Talking that loudly was like signing your death warrant. In a forest like this, position and secrecy was everything. Making sure to keep his chakra low, Naruto continued to wait. It was a game of patience. Since he didn't have the energy to call upon them in Geku at the moment, he needed to make do with his basic skills. Sadly, as he only specialized in speed and secrecy, he wouldn't have stood any chance against the Anbu in a full frontal battle. Waiting for another 30 minutes, Naruto was about to send out a feint to draw out a ninja when he suddenly felt a presence slightly flicker just 30 meters away from him. Smiling. He immediately undid his henge and zipped towards the signal faster than a flying kunai. In a matter of seconds, his sword cut through the man's neck, causing his Sharingan to activate unconsciously from the act. However, he immediately noticed that something was wrong, as his target suddenly turned to stone and fell from the tree branch. The heavy impact immediately uncovered his presence, causing Naruto to swear before trying to run away. He was too late though, as he felt three chakras around him in a 15 meter radius. He had been careless. Cursing his impatience, Naruto's eyes returned to their steely blue as he took of his hood. His blonde hair seemed to bathe in the moonlight, making him seem ethereal. If the Anbu had not been so focused on taking down their target, they would have almost believed the boy to be some sort of spectral being. More dead than living, he seemed to embody a transition of sorts. However, this was not a routine mission, and this boy was definitely not one to underestimate. Naruto continued to look between the three men as he felt his left arm begin to twitch uncontrollably. Taking a brief look down, he was shocked to find the tattoo again, this time with the sword entering the bird's mouth. Puzzled, he tried to examine it closer but had to immediately snap his head back up as he felt a change in the wind. Placing his sword in front of him, he deflected the shuriken as he summoned six clones with his other hand. He didn't have that much chakra left in him, but it was still enough to summon at least another 50 clones before completely running out. Sheathing his sword. He breathed in deeply as he saw two of the Anbu come at him from his peripheral vision. Jumping up, he dismissed his clones, thus causing a massive smoke screen, and blew a giant fireball into the hazy clearing. Throwing several kunai in with explosive tags attached to them, he then jumped away as the tree he had been standing on splintered into several thousand pieces. Turning to run, his face was suddenly smashed into the tree though as a gloved hand grinded the entirety of his head into the splintery wood. Naruto quickly recovered as he pulled out his sword and tried to swipe the man. The attacker simply blocked the blonde's attack with his metal forearm protector before stabbing his Anbu sword into the boy's shoulder. Growling in pain, Naruto felt his arm grow limp as he tried to take a peek at the man through the Anbu's fingers. Give up Uzumaki Naruto of the Jogan. You are outclassed. Return to me with Konoha. There you will await your trials until further notice. You will not kill another as long as I'm here. Naruto groaned as he moved his other arm to attack the man. With surprising speed, the man took Naruto's sword and slammed it into his other shoulder, effectively pinning the boy against the tree trunk. Stepping back, the Anbu's hand glowed with green chakra. Using his Sharingan, he recognized it as a medical technique in which it severed the target's nerves. Struggling even harder against his bonds, the swords started to budge slightly. But even as he moved forward little by little, a small feeling of fear began to creep into his mind. Was it over already? Was his purpose already finished? Staring at the oncoming man, 
Naruto vanquished the thoughts from his head and relinquished the Sharingan. He didn't want to resort to this since it would make him mostly useless for a good time after, but, taking a deep breath, he gathered the rest of his chakra and then some at an attempt to summon the Mengekyu. However, in doing so, a sudden pain struck him in the back of his head as his mind began spinning. Focusing harder, he tried once again to call upon the demonic eyes, but instead ended up with a searing pain on his arm. Looking down, he became surprised as the tattoo from before glowed vibrantly. With the man's attack imminent, Naruto coldly stared at the incoming attack without fear. Ag the sudden scream, brutish and full of anguish, had come not from Naruto or the Anbu, but instead from underneath them. Pausing in his attack, the Anbu forgot about his target as he looked over to check what had made the sound. Even Naruto forgot his problems as he turned his head to the side with curiosity. Staggering towards the clearing, one of the Anbu from before walked into the clearing with a bloody stump where his right arm should have been. Taking a few steps forward, the Anbu then collapsed onto his knees before falling apart, literally. The man's body had split into four neat pieces, each part contributing to a bloody cross on the forest floor. Naruto looked back at his attacker as he saw the Anbu stare dumbly at the scene. In sheer trauma, the Anbu shook with anger. Jumping down to his comrade's body, he rested a hand on one of the pieces before standing up solemnly. Who did that? In the name of the Hokage, I will end your life for your act. Naruto groaned as he took the time to pull out both blades and sheath his own sword into his scabbard. Throwing away the other sword, he felt the Kyuubi heal the puncture wounds as he felt an oncoming presence. Emerging from the forest where the Anbu had stumbled out of, Azawari and Natsumi walked out. One look at Natsumi's blood-covered figure said everything. At her side was an Aganata with the blade of the long weapon bathed in crimson blood. Growling, the Anbu stared at the two before pulling out a second sword. You two. Who are you? Azawari stepped forward as he waved to Naruto. Ah, Aniki. Sorry we're late. Natsumi wanted to pack our stuff first. I tried to help you, but the man was too strong. Thankfully, Natsumi arrived just in time. Biting back a globule of blood, Naruto jumped down as he slowly walked towards them. What are you two doing here? And more than that. Staring at Natsumi's blood-bathed figure, he narrowed his eyes. What are you? Natsumi smiled as she licked the blood off her arm. Leaning against her weapon, she smiled, showing two feline-like canines resting on her bottom lip. Sorry we didn't mention this before Naruto. But we're professional bounty hunters. I'm known as Niko-chan and Azawaris. Well, he doesn't have a code name since I'm the one that does all the killing. Naruto looked between the two in disbelief as he continued to try and stand up straight. So you two lied about attending the academy? Azawari nodded as he stepped forward. Yes, we needed you to come to us to avoid suspicion. But in the end, you really were funny. Turning towards the Anbu captain, the boy happily smiled as he stepped forward. Sorry Anbu-san. I can't let you have this target. I need him for something. Oh, and about your other men, we had to erase them. The Anbu captain cursed as he clenched his fists. These damn children had slaughtered all of his men? This was impossible. It was supposed to be an easy catch mission. All of them were demons. Before, he had thought the Kyuubi Jinchuriki to have just been misunderstood, even giving him anonymous presents on the boy's birthday to try and make up for his village's heartless attacks. Clenching his fists in anger. The man shook his head as he took a brief glimpse at Naruto. He had been wrong after all and his team had been right, the boy was a demon. Swearing to avenge his comrades' lives, he looked back at the smiling white-haired youth and charged after him in an attempt to cleave his head. He was shocked to find his sword blocked by the girl's Naginata instead though. Looking at the two in fear, he simply watched as the boy walked up to him. Sorry Asin. I didn't want to resort to this. But he's been wanting to get out ever since you guys came. Naruto looked at them in puzzlement as he leaned against a nearby tree for support. Azawari bent his head down as shadows cast over his eyes. Natsumi looked at him in concern but quickly turned her attention towards the Anbu after finding out that her opponent had chosen to leap back. Natsumi. I'll take care of this. Natsumi nodded as the Naginata disappeared in a plume of smoke. Looking over to Naruto, she yelled over to him. Take a good look at this Naruto. This is the reason why I usually fight and he stays in the sidelines. It's actually a lot cleaner. A plume of gray chakra suddenly erupted as Azawari's head snapped up, revealing glowing gray eyes. About time you let me out Azawari. Naruto gripped the tree for support as he felt a wave of nostalgia wash over him. The chakra was familiar. Ch. Is this guy my opponent? I thought I told you to feed me strong ones. This guy's mind is too weak. Did you already break him mentally? Jeez. Next time. Let me have some of the fun. The Anbu looked at the boy in puzzlement before shaking his head. He would avenge his comrades. 
flying into seals, the man took a deep breath. Katan, Gukaku no Jutsu, Grand Fireball Technique. Naruto eyes widened as he felt an immense chakra come from the boy. It was nothing compared to the demon foxes or the Mangekyu, but regardless, the battle ended before it started. The Onbu's body, petrified to stone under some unknown force, cracked apart into several pieces as Azawari looked at his handiwork in Glee. Doten, Ishihakachi, Stone Graveyard. Even as the Onbu's body turned to dust, Azawari stepped over to Naruto, his glowing gray eyes countering Naruto's wary ice blue ones. Raising his hand as a greeting, Azawari grinned evilly as he revealed fierce canines. Nice to finally meet you Sharingan user. I'm this guy's other side, Osawaru. Or maybe it'd be better to refer to me as the Jinchuriki for the Sanbi. Chapter 5, Fury Naruto almost bit his lip in surprise when he heard the boy introduce himself. Noting his reaction, Osawaru gave a toothy grin and slowly withdrew his hand. Surprised? I see you know what a Jinchuriki is. Taking a few steps back to open up some distance, Naruto tried to clear his head as he felt his exhaustion weigh upon him with malicious intent. But he needed to get out of this, precarious situation first. When you say the Sanbi, you refer to the three-tailed turtle. Am I correct? Osawaru looked genuinely surprised for a moment before nodding. That's right boy. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he tried to gather some chakra for an emergency defense. He had learned from Itachi that the best defense was anticipation. Why trick me? What's your plan? Looking icily between the two, he tensed his muscles as Natsumi stepped forward. Don't worry Naruto. If we had wanted to kill you, we would have done so when you stepped into the village. True, you may have the jogan, but we're professionals. Professionals? Yeah, we're bounty hunters. Giving a cat-like grin, she walked over to Osawaru and lightly tapped his head. Time to go back big guy. Azawari would want to talk to him. Grumbling, Osawaru took one last look at Naruto with his gray eyes before a black don't penetrated them. The immense chakra he had felt earlier disappeared as Osawaru collapsed to the ground with a smile. Oops. I hope no one got hurt too much this time. Natsumi nodded as she looked over to the pile of dust that had once stood in the form of a ninja. He used the stone technique to take the leader down. Of course, he was disappointed by the meal, as usual. Ah. Well, it can't be helped. Looking over to Naruto, Osawaru waved at him to come closer. I'm sure you're surprised Oniki. What you just saw was my other side. Naruto quirked an eyebrow as he took a couple steps forward. Even Natsumi had settled down and seemed as she did the day before. Any bloodlust the either of them had shown disappeared with the boy's transformation. What do you mean by, other side? Natsumi sighed as she ruffled Azawari's hair and sat down next to him. Basically, Azawari's had disassociative personality disorder ever since he was young. Interestingly enough, when the Mizukage sealed the Sanbi into Azawari, it was actually sealed inside his split personality, Osawaru. I'm not sure why, but Azawari doesn't seem to carry any effects from the demon, even though it's still his body. Osawaru on the other hand is almost like the demon himself. It's kinda confusing. Naruto nodded as he digested this new information. And you? What's your story? Natsumi grinned as she leaned back. I'm just a low-level cat demon. Certain circumstances have led to my becoming this guy's guardian. Even though you're such a cute kid, I'm not going to tell you any more than that. Winking at Naruto, the blonde boy understood that she was probably sensitive to the subject. Azawari turned to her though as his lips started to tremble. Certain circumstances? Natsumi laughed as she slapped him on the back. A, hey, you've grown on me. Either way, I'm stuck with you. Might as well make it fun. Plus, we get to meet fun guys like him. Azawari smiled as he nodded. Well, there it is Aniki. Any questions? Naruto shook his head at the whimsical nature of the scene inside. Yes, my original one. What business do you have with me? If it was for the bounty, you could have captured me during my sleep. Azawari took out a bingo book as he flipped open to the last page. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but in the bingo book, it says that I'm an SS rank criminal, called Naruto of the Jogan. Naruto completed for him, puzzled at first. Azawari smiled as he tucked his book back into his pocket. Yeah. But it wasn't the money that interested me. It was your eyes. Azawari's eyes suddenly glazed over as he looked beyond Naruto, as if some event were playing back in his mind. It was three years ago. My uncle came by one night and told me that my father had been killed by a man with crimson eyes. Basically, it's a vendetta. But now that I look at you, it's pretty obvious you're not the guy. That is, unless you were super strong at the age of five. Naruto's eyes suddenly narrowed as his voice hardened with asperity. You said that there was a man with similar eyes to mine? Did you catch his name? Azawari shook his head as he looked away again. No. 
All I remember hearing was that my father's eyes had been plucked out just before he died. Clutching the ground with bloodless palms, Azawari tore up a patch of grass and threw it to the side. My uncle arrived at the scene when it happened. They fought, but eventually the man used some black fire and disappeared. That's another reason why I thought that you might be the person since the bingo book says that you have black chakra. Naruto closed his eyes as he sat down to rest. It must have been him. Even in Kiri he couldn't escape that man's horrors. But if his uncle had fought him and lived to tell the story. Wait. Your uncle fought with him and lived? Azawari grinned as he flexed his arms. Oh yeah. I might not be that strong, but my uncle used to be the leader of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. That is, after he ran away to Kumo to study architecture. He's kinda goofy like that. Kumo. Naruto rolled the village's name off of his tongue before nodding. Your uncle's name? Azawari blinked as he suddenly became cautious. You're not going to go after him to attack him, are you? If you are, no. Rest assured that I am only going to your uncle for information. He might be able to give me more information about these eyes. I give you my word that I will not harm him. Azawari frowned as he shook his head. Sorry. I already told you that he's in Kumo. If you really want to find him, he'll find you. But before that, there's a favor I want to ask of you. Natsumi, who had been silent during the conversation suddenly became interested as she turned her head. We want to see the Jogan. It might provide me some clues as to who my father's murderer is. Naruto closed his eyes as he stood up. A reasonable request. However, I don't have the chakra to activate such a technique at the moment. But more importantly, I think I know who killed your father. Of course, it's just speculation. Azawari suddenly leapt up as he ran over to Naruto and put him in a fierce grip. What? You've seen him before? Who is he? Naruto frowned as he slapped the boy's hands away and straightened his collar. His name is Uchiha Madara wielder of the Mangeku Sharingan. That's also what my Jogan is called. However, our eyes are different. Different? But don't you both have this Mangeku? Yes. But that is why I wish to meet your uncle. I have very little knowledge of why I have such eyes. I also do not know much about the man who might have killed your father. Azawari visibly groaned as he slumped his shoulders. So basically, but I can show you how he looked. Azawari's head snapped back up as hope returned to his eyes. Really? That's all we need. Natsumi, are you ready? The girl's bloodlust suddenly returned as her eyes shifted into cat-like irises. Yep, Naruto looked between the two as he searched for the image of the man in his brain. It wasn't hard, as his face was definitely unforgettable. Taking a deep breath, his form shifted as he transformed into a carbon copy of the man, glowing red eyes included. Immediately, Natsumi's eyes glowed as she began jotting down notes at an ungodly speed. Puzzled, Naruto dismissed the transformation. Turning to Natsumi, Azawari looked over the notebook and smiled. You got all the information? Yes, it'll take about seven days for my powers to be able to find him. But I think it'll be okay. Naruto looked between the two with a mix of surprise and impressment. They were perfect as bounty hunters. A sudden twinge in his head made his eyes droop though, signaling that his reticular activating system was slowly becoming inactive. I'm sorry, but if you could please provide lodging. Azawari blinked as he smacked his forehead. Ah. Sorry for being so rude and icky. You must be exhausted. Natsumi, put him on my back. With that, Naruto felt the last of his defenses go and fell into blissful unconsciousness. Ooh oh. Sasuke took a deep breath as he blew his 20th fireball that day. This jutsu was his pride and joy, the one thing his father had taught him before his death. Making the seals once again, he was about to unleash another one when he suddenly felt a hand gently clasp his shoulder. Stopping, the young Uchiha looked up to the sad face of a masked man with a Konoha headband covering one eye. You shouldn't use your chakra so much. I know it hurts but... It doesn't hurt. The man looked surprised for a second before Sasuke continued. I don't have time to just cry about it. I need to get stronger, to avenge my friends and family. I need the power to change things. The man looked at him curiously before slowly asking. To make things right? Sasuke looked startled as he thought about it for a few seconds. Turning towards the man. He repeated with a soft smile. To make things right, Kakashi smiled as he bent down to look at Sasuke at eye level. Pulling up his headband, Sasuke had to stifle a gasp as he saw the familiar eye of his clan. How do you have the? Ah, uh, I'll explain that to you some other time. But for now, are you interested in obtaining power to protect the ones you love? Sasuke frowned as he looked back towards the lake. All the ones I love are dead. At this point, I can only honor their memory by killing their murderer. Kakashi sighed as he placed his headband back on. Vengeance is never the answer. You will come to realize that only after it is too late. But perhaps, I can help you overcome it. Come with me Sasuke, 
My name is Hitake Kakashi. Under the Hokage's orders, I'll be your personal tutor from now on. Walking away, Sasuke stared after the man's moving figure before looking back at the lake. The ripples on the lake that had been caused by his multiple jutsus were dying down, forming circles and epicircles in perfect kaleidoscopes. Wrenching his eyes away from the beatific sight, he ran after Kakashi with a renewed determination. You better teach me well Scarecrow Sensei. Kakashi's name translates to Scarecrow. Kakashi's eye sported a smile as he pulled out an orange book, an item that Sasuke would learn to hate in the coming years. Well, this will be my first time having such a young student to teach. I'm sure we'll both learn a lot from each other. Hi, Scarecrow Sensei. Kakashi sweat dropped as he turned to look at his newest student. Could you please not call me that? Smirking, Sasuke walked ahead. When do we start training? Crazy hair sensei, Kakashi groaned as he flipped over to the next page. I liked Scarecrow better, Gaki-kun. Brat-kun, ooh-oh. Madara closed his eyes as he tried to keep his hands from trembling. It was almost time to transfer bodies again. These eyes drained his host's bodies far too quickly. There was that one body, the one he had found under the buried rubble back near Iwa. Yes, that one would have to do for now, Madara sensei. Looking up, Madara smiled as his student kneeled before him. What news do you bring, Itachi? Itachi kept his head low as he continued speaking with a straight voice. The one known as Pain refused our invitation. However, the missing nin known as Etsu seemed genuinely interested in your plan. He is waiting outside right now. Madara grinned evilly as he nodded. Good, good. And about the boy, do you have any news on him? Itachi shook his head as he stoically replied. The boy known as Uzumaki Naruto disappeared from Konoha and was proclaimed an SS rank criminal. I have not found his location. Madara waved his hand as he leaned back in his chair. The cave was a little cold, but it fitted his personality nicely. Very well. We will see how the boy develops. He has caught my fascination. For now, we will focus on our original goal. After the construction of Akatsuki, we will then turn our attention to the Baijuo. At that time, we will meet young Naruto again. But for now, let Zetsu in. I will personally go talk with Pain later. Understood. Ooh oh. Naruto stood in front of Natsumi and Azawari at the bridge leaving Kiri. After getting a full two days of rest, he had recovered enough energy to be at 90% efficiency. They had all packed up their items soon after, deciding to split up at the village's bridge. But before they took their own paths, he needed to fulfill a certain promise. All right. When I form them in Gekyu, be careful not to stare at it too long. I still don't know all the effects of the eyes. Receiving two eager nods of confirmation, Naruto summoned an ungodly amount of chakra to his eyes and flared the Sharingan to life. However, the energy it took was incredibly small. Moreover, it felt different. True, his vision was enhanced, but there was something missing. Um. Aniki. Your eyes are in the normal Sharingan. Well, I guess they aren't normal. There are two tomos in each eye. Naruto looked startled as he looked at the two. You're sure? There isn't a cross-like image, Natsumi appeared to be disappointed as she shook her head. Nope. It's just a normal Sharingan. Frowning, Naruto tried to push more chakra into the eyes, but found that it was not possible. Relaxing, he cut the flow of chakra as his eyes returned to their normal blue hue. I don't understand. Could it have something to do with the tattoo? Thinking back to night he had fought with the Anbu, he had not been able to summon them in Geku then also. Of course, at the time he had thought that it was because of chakra exhaustion. Staring at the bird tattoo on his arm, he grimaced as it looked up at him with a teasing gaze. I'm sorry. It seems as though I cannot activate them in Gekyu. As for the reason, my ignorance is as great as yours. Natsumi and Azawari visibly deflated before they shrugged. Well, as long as I got information about my possible father's killer, I'm happy. Right Natsumi? Natsumi grinned as her cat-like teeth showed. Right. Well, I guess we've got to go our separate ways. Walking over to Naruto. She was about to give him a kiss on the cheek but found cold steel against her neck instead. Are you trying to poison me? Naruto asked. Twitching, Natsumi slammed his head against the pavement and patted her hands. Geez Naruto. Don't you know what a good luck kiss is? Removing his head from the wooden floor, Naruto brushed off the debris as he stored his kunai. Such a thing is logical. I have learned that a kiss holds no functional purpose other than to inject poison through senbone hidden in the mouth. However, I apologize for thinking that you were about to poison me despite the fact that you showed such hospitality. That was also illogical. Natsumi blinked as she laughed it off. It's fine. That's what makes you such a cute guy in the first place. Naruto's eyes registered slight surprise before Natsumi bounded off. Azawari. Hurry up and say your goodbyes to Naruto-chan. 
I've got a hot trail. Azawari smiled as he went up to Naruto and beamed at him. Thanks Aniki. You helped us out a lot. If you ever need help, don't be afraid to ask. Next time we meet, let's go get some ramen or something. Naruto gave off a ghost of a smile as he nodded. Sure. Turning, Azawari ran after Natsumi as he waved goodbye. Make sure you don't die Aniki. I'll hold you to that promise. Naruto frowned as he looked after their disappearing figures, gently stroking his chin. That was a promise? Shaking his head, he turned to the opposite direction as he pulled out a map. Kirei was a fair distance away from Kumo. He would first need to cut through the small village of Wave and then make his way through Kuza and the mountains bordering the land of snow. After crossing Snow Kingdom, he then had to continue east to reach Kumo. Memorizing the geography, he walked along the road as his thoughts turned towards his current predicament. Hopefully, Azawari's uncle could give him some clues as to what went wrong as well as help him understand the man who had started all of this. Not having the mange in Kaiyu was a troubling thought. Despite the connotations and memories that came with it, it had already become a part of him. A piece of his persona, he had lost a ballast. But he couldn't let this misfortune weigh upon him now. For the being, he would work on his own strength and find a way to make the regular Sharingan as strong as possible. Perhaps after he obtained the third level, the Mangekyu would reappear. Complacent with the thought, he let it go as he hefted his pack more comfortably onto his shoulder. It was filled with cup ramen a delicacy he had discovered at Azawari's house. Looking at a nearby tree, he suddenly stopped on the road as he nostalgically remembered Shisui training in the forest near their former training spot. Walking over to the tree, he lightly kicked it, causing hundreds of leaves to fall off and flutter down. Activating his now two Tomoe Sharingan, he unsheathed his Chokudo as he flew through the green debris and sliced each one perfectly down the middle. Finishing, he sheathed the sword as he released the Sharingan. The second level was definitely stronger than the first as he was able to not only catch the movements of the leaves, but even slow them down in his mind. Walking back to the road, he decided that the best course of action would be to train on the way. With his resolution for the next year or so in mind, he picked up his pace and left the 400 half pieces of leaves behind. Ooh oh, this is treacherous. You must not do it. The Hokage yelled up at the council members in sheer fury. The majority of the council leered at the Hokage as the eldest one spoke with a sneer firmly planted on his face. The said man was called Donzo, an influential person who usually did not attend the meetings. You yourself said that the boy was not to be labeled a missing nin. As a dangerous ex-citizen of Konoha, is it not fair to notify the people of Fire Country at least? The Hokage cursed under his breath as he clenched his fists. But doing this would further isolate the boy and, do you dare imply that you care for such a monster? The council has deemed these measures to be most proper. Therefore, Uzumaki Naruto will be open for bounty to all citizens in Fire Country. Moreover, the Anbu squad sent after him has not appeared. We can only assume that they met their ends by the demon's hands. So the bounty shall be increased to 1 million Ryo. That is all. The Hokage shook with anger as he grabbed his hat and flew back to his office. As Hokage. He only had the power of approving or vetoing laws and proclaiming war. But with a high enough majority, even his vetoes were able to be overturned. Those fools. Not only does Konoha not have the economic luxury of simply handing off a million Rio, but this act will surely cause the boy to harbor deeper grudges against us. In time, our methods may truly make him into a demon. What fools? Ooh oh. Naruto walked through the small town known as Wave with an interested eye. The country seemed at the lower economic spectrum. But the people seemed happy. Ha! You can't even save your own dog? You're so pathetic, Inari. Naruto groaned with annoyance as he heard the voices permeate his once peaceful air. A group of boys bullying another? This is almost like deja vu. Better get away from here before I get dragged into another mess. Turning away from the sight, he was about to leave the boys to their own devices when he suddenly heard a splash. Hearing the sounds of drowning, he felt his consciousness get the better of him as he turned to save the stupid kid. However, a large shadow beat him to it as a man dove into water and fished out the boy. Remaining behind the scenes, he observed the boy with a strange twinge in his heart. The other boys had left him, knowing that he couldn't swim. To willingly sentence a child to possible death. Images of him sitting in the playgrounds alone at night while it was raining broke into his mind. Grimacing, he clenched his fists. Whisking away towards the bullies that had already gone away, he found them soon enough laughing in front of a store while recounting their story to some other kids. Resting on a nearby tree branch, Naruto performed a couple of seals as he lightly landed on the floor. Pressing his hands against the floor, he sent a wave of chakra through the earth that lifted the boys up on giant earth pikes, by their pants. Wah! The kids, obviously baffled at the phenomenon, winced as they tried to free themselves from the earth-shattering wedgie. 
Get us off of here. Walking up to them, Naruto narrowed his eyes as he snapped his fingers and demolished the earth pikes. Next time, don't pick on weaker people. Leaving the petrified boys behind, Naruto groaned inwardly as he hopped back to the previous site where the boy had been. Again. These impulses to help such weaklings were proving more and more troublesome. But part of him just couldn't let it go. Part of him saw himself in the oppressed, mirroring his state those many years before he had met. No, he didn't need to think of such things. Finding a campfire in a small foliage near the lake the boy had almost drowned before, Naruto noticed that the boy was simply unconscious with the large man sitting next to him. Deciding to make his presence known, Naruto walked up to the man and bowed lightly. I see you saved the child. The man smiled brightly as he nodded. Of course. However, I should have taught those boys a lesson. Naruto looked away as he avoided eye contact. I took care of it. But I am happy the boy did not drown. Thank you for your act of kindness. In the back of his mind, Naruto wondered how the man did not look down on him for being a child. Instead, he seemed to regard him as a man. Smiling, he decided that this man was okay for a human. The man looked at Naruto strangely before asking questioningly. Do you know this child? Turning, Naruto walked away as he waved his hand. No. I have no relation with him. Please do not tell him about me. Stopping, he paused for a second before adding. And if you could, please be a guiding figure. It would be. I am sorry. I speak out of line. The man shook his head. Even with his head turned, Naruto could tell that he was smiling. Don't worry. I'll protect him. I'm sure that with a little bit of teaching and care, this boy will become someone who'll be able to protect others. Looking at the campfire, his eyes shined in the brightness as the fishes slowly cooked. My name's Keza. What's your name kid? Looking up, he found the boy to be gone already. Confused for a few seconds, he then felt the other boy by his side stirring and turned the fish on the stick. Hey kid, looks like you're finally up. Inari's blank eyes looked at the man next to him as he felt a warm fire surge through his body. Ooh oh. Naruto walked through the town as he felt curious eyes on him. Of course, it was natural since he was in full shinobi garb. Not everyone would be as open as the man he had met before. Deciding to be less conspicuous, he ducked into a corner and quickly hedged his clothes into more civilian-like ones and strode out to the street. As long as people didn't try to touch him, they wouldn't realize that the black sweater and pants he was wearing were actually illusions. A light growl echoed from his stomach as he realized that he was hungry. After being on the road for several days with only a few berries and fruits for food, his stomach seemed to desire something with more substance. Walking along the street, he looked at the many signs in front of the stores. One caught his eyes however, as a large sign said help wanted, fast pay. Deciding to take a look since he was in need of being able to purchase commodities anyways, he stepped into the small shop and looked around. It was a carpenter's shop, with numerous crafted items laid out upon shelves and shelves above them. Moreover, each item was delicately crafted with incredible detailing. Admiring the many figures and appliances, he walked through the maze of wood and even found metal and glass work near the back. Sculptures of tiny animals to bolts and chairs. It seemed as though the owner worked with all types of crafting. Why, hello young one. What are you doing there? Naruto almost jumped back from surprise at the sudden voice. Someone had actually snuck up on him? Turning around, his eyes met an old man in his 80s with the entirety of his body leaning against a staff. Remembering his manners, Naruto bowed before replying. I am sorry. I saw the wanted ad and walked in. The beauty of your items stole my thoughts after that. I apologize for wandering. The man's eyes twinkled as he stepped closer. He was bald with a long, flowing white beard. A kindly visage, the man held up his hand and nodded. Here, come with me. If you like these items, you will definitely enjoy this. Naruto hesitantly took the man's hand before following him to the very back of the store. On the way, he looked upon countless instruments with a strange sort of wonder. These days, people don't have time to buy such things. In the end, I can only sell chairs and replacement parts for machinery. But the profit isn't bad, so I'm not complaining. Laughing, the old man continued leading Naruto through the myriad of items before finally reaching the very back shelf. Ah! Here! This is my masterpiece. Naruto felt his heart race as he stared into what might have been the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. Standing in the round, an angelic statue made of marble shined in the sunlight that penetrated the small window above it. It was modeled after a young girl no more than 16. However, the figure seemed to mirror a goddess more than a normal girl. Despite being a boy who had no experiences in the taste of women, Naruto could feel that this statue probably took the very definition of feminine beauty. What, is it? The man chuckled as he walked up to it with a weary smile. My first and greatest work. I completed it when I was but a lad. 
I had been struck down in my job. Near death, I saw dreams come and go. But in what appeared to be my last breath, an image of this person suddenly formed in my head. After that, I quit my job and devoted my life to art. That was nearly 60 years ago. Naruto pried his eyes away from the piece as he looked up at the man. I see. Thank you for sharing such a piece with me. I will treasure it. But about the job. The old man laughed as he draped a light cloth over the statue and made his way back towards the front of the store. I see child. You need money. Well, I need a live-in apprentice to learn my trade. What do you say to that? Naruto was about to explain that he was in a hurry to get to another village when he suddenly felt his mouth freeze. Something about the place just seemed. Comfortable. Opening his mouth, closing it, and finally opening it again. He slowly replied, if I could just stay for a few days. The old man's eyes twinkled as he left. Of course. And while you're here, you'll be my special guest. I have a spare room upstairs. I was just making dinner before you came, so we will be able to eat soon. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he felt his hairs raise. Wait, that's it? No asking for my name or where I came from? The man's eyes sparkled as if they were able to see right through him. No. If you had wanted to tell me, I would have known. I understand that you've seen much. Your face, though it betrays your age, also sports one of the most painful eyes I've seen. I know perfectly well how we need to get away sometimes. In time, you'll share your thoughts and if you wish for me too, I will offer my most humble advice. Naruto blinked as he shook his head. The man emanated absolutely no ill intent at all. Bowing, he walked up the stairs and entered the nearby room. Turning, the old man rubbed his chin as he thought out loud. I hope my guest enjoys porridge. I might even have some candy in the freezer from a couple years ago. Two years later, Naruto's internal alarm clock rang as he felt the sun lay upon him with a warm embrace. It was 8. Work started at 8.30 today. Calmly placing his legs over the side of the mattress, he got up from the bed as made his way towards the bathroom. Stepping inside, he brushed his teeth as he looked at his hair. It was time to cut it soon. Finishing up with the basic nuisances of the morning, he changed into his worker's outfit. A simple white apron over his black t-shirt and pants. Looking at himself in the mirror, he realized that he was finally starting to show signs of growth, even if he still was smaller than most kids his age. When he had first come to Gen's house, Gen was the old man's name, he had only expected his stay to take a couple days. However, the practice of sculpting and creating had enamored him and before he had known it, he had found himself with a permanent residence in Gen's house. Walking downstairs, he was greeted by the sight of two people he had grown incredibly accustomed to over the last year. Naruto Nisan, come get your breakfast. It'll turn cold soon. A young girl with long, flowing white hair and emerald eyes looked up to him as she smiled. Naruto couldn't help but return it as he sat down to his breakfast. Hayami was a young girl who had grown up in the darker side of life. Her father was a drunkard and gave no financial support. Instead, she lived off her meager wages, which came from selling flowers that she found on the outskirts of Wave. Yet despite her troubling situation, the white-haired nine-year-old never seemed to lose any spirit. In a way, she was the total opposite of Naruto. Bright, optimistic, and cheerful. However, she almost never seemed to have energy since her meals were usually of the cheapest sort. But every once in a while, she came to Gen's house where there were plenty of materials. In exchange for some food, she cooked for them and made whatever she could. The old man had tried to tell her that it was unnecessary and that she was welcome to eat there every day, but the girl had remained adamant about earning her own food. Hayami, isn't your birthday in a few days? Gen spoke from behind his newspaper. Hayami brightened as she nodded. Naruto Nisan, in a few days I'll be as old as you. Naruto waved his hand as he continued to eat his eggs. Why don't you start learning how to be a carpenter now? That way, you can make a real living. Gen smiled as he looked at Naruto. The boy had become much more informal. Well, at least compared to how he had been before. When he had first come, he had only spoken a formal tone and had resembled a ghost. Now, it seemed as though he was finally becoming a kid. Looking to Hayami, he smiled. Yes, I could always use the extra hands. Hayami smiled sadly as she shook her head. Sorry. Father would find out and he would make trouble for you guys. I already have so much that I owe you. Naruto scoffed as he looked away. Inside however, he was unsettled. No one had found out above his abilities yet. In fact, he had hidden the fact that he was able to use chakra. But it didn't mean that he didn't train. No. In fact, he trained harder than ever. Every night from 10 to 4 in the morning he trained on the sea. However, despite his efforts he had yet to learn any new techniques, nor had he upgraded his Sharingan. Also, with his secret came the fact that he appeared to be a weak 10-year-old boy. 
This meant that he wasn't supposed to be able to defend against people like Hayami's father. But telling his secret would have made even greater complications. Just the other day, while making some errands to a nearby village, he had seen a wanted poster of himself. In a backwater country like Wave, such a thing was not a problem. But for now, he needed to be careful not to make a name for himself. Hayami, couldn't you work here without him knowing? Hayami frowned as she pouted. Well, I'd have to share the money I make with him and he'd ask where I got it. Well, why don't you just work for food then? Because that wouldn't be fair to him. If I eat every day and he has nothing to eat, I mean, Naruto crossed his arms as he let his apparent distaste of the man show. You should just let him starve. Hayami frowned as she got up from her seat. You're so mean Naruto. Family's family. They don't betray each other. Naruto suddenly stood up as he remembered Itachi. I'm going to go to work now. Walking briskly towards the workshop area of the store, he closed the door behind him, leaving a surprised Hayami. Did, I say something bad? Gen sighed as he folded his newspaper. I too mentioned family once and he reacted in a similar fashion. I'm guessing something bad has happened to them. Well, I wouldn't be worried about it. Looking at the clock, Hayami stood up as she took out a yellow flower. This was the best one I found this morning. Please it give to Naruto and tell him I'm sorry. Gen smiled as he took the flower and put it in a vase. You can tell him yourself after you get back from work. Hayami bowed as she went towards the door. Thank you Gensan. Smiling, she turned and walked out of the shop. Meanwhile, Naruto had begun forging metals as he tried to form the iron head of a rake. He had just finished crafting the wooden part before. Flipping the hot iron piece over unconsciously, he began to ponder his current situation. He had not forgotten his objective. Azawari's uncle was still there. But days had turned to months, and finally, months had turned to years. A strange feeling came up inside him as he let himself go in the workroom. Here he was safe, both from his past and his present. It felt like running away, but... Looking out the window towards the retreating figure of Hayami, he smiled ever so slightly. The action was still unfamiliar with him, but the girl seemed to bring it out. Shaking his head, he sighed. No. He was creating his present, now. Finishing up with the iron, he delved it into water as steam filled the room. Taking it out, he straightened out the rough patches and put it into the refinery pile. He would come back to it later. But for now, pulling out a long piece of metal, he dipped it into the furnace as he saw the flames flash brightly due to the pumped air. He had gotten into the habit of making swords. For some reason, learning to craft had been incredibly easy for him from the start. Gen had told him that he was a natural genius at creating things, but the craft he had the most skill in was metal work, or specifically, sword making. About a month or two into the job, he had started making swords. However, Gen had never taught him anything about the art. In fact, the old man refused to make any weapons for some reason. Every time he had asked, the old man simply smiled and went back to his carpentry. However, he had not discouraged Naruto's practice of the art, so he flourished in it. So far, he had made 6 katana, 30 chokudo, and 14 kadachi. And many of the ones he made sold for a very high price. In fact, Gen's store had even begun to attract a few famous samurai and weapons dealers from different lands. Of course, by his request, Gen had kept the maker's name anonymous. However, the best ones were always kept. In fact, the ones he sold were all mess-ups of sorts. But if they wanted them, well, who was he to throw away money? Flipping the sword onto the table, he smashed his hammer against it with expert precision. One of these days, he would make a sword with the proper ceremony. Looking at the clock, he wiped his brow as he decided to go out for a snack. Since it was a weekend, business would be slow. Deciding to go and humor Hayami, he took off his apron and passed by the sleeping Gen. Looking carefully, he noticed that there was a yellow flower left in a vase next to him. Picking it up, he smiled as he noticed that it was not harmed in any way. It could only be her work. Leaving a note on the table, he stepped out the door as he felt his eyes strain from the sunlight. Passing by numerous shops and people, he acknowledged their greetings with slight nods and continued his way towards the central marketplace. Oh, Uzumaki-san, Naruto Nichan. Naruto stopped as he heard another couple of familiar voices call him. Smiling. He turned to meet a young boy and a strong-looking man next to him. Inari, Keiza. How are you doing today? Keiza grinned as he lifted Inari onto his shoulders. I just taught Inari here how to swim. He's a fast learner. Inari pumped up his arms as he yelled happily. Of course. I'm going to be just like dad. Keiza grinned as he looked to Naruto. Well, how is business? Adequate. As for your achievement the other day, I congratulate you. Keiza laughed as he shook his head. It was nothing. A man must protect what he cares for. Naruto nodded slowly as he looked away. I guess. 
Still, swimming in those currents to close that emergency gate must have been hard on you. Yet you still have a lot of energy. Well, if it wasn't for that, Inari here wouldn't have wanted to learn how to swim. Inari beamed as he held onto a surrogate father's head. Yeah. Dad's so awesome. He was able to swim so fast in that super crazy water. And he's the village's hero. Mom said so. Naruto smiled at the boy's exuberance. Yes, your father is a true hero. Looking towards the marketplace, he slightly bowed as he turned to leave. Wait. Naruto Nichan. Mom wanted you to you to come by and have dinner with us tonight. Oh, and she said it's cool if you brought a friend too. Naruto paused as he thought. I see. I will accept your invitation. Inari and Keiza grinned simultaneously as they waved goodbye to the now leaving Naruto. Deciding to buy an apple to bring as a small present, the blonde stopped in front of a stand. However, it looked as if the stand owner was having some problems. Hey, Gato wants his taxes, so make sure you pay them now. I'm sorry. But we don't have enough money to give right now. Ch. That's no excuse. Hurry up and. Here. Naruto took out a wad of cash as he shoved it into the man's face. Take this and leave them alone. The man blindly took the cash and smiled widely. That's right you brat. Just he suddenly paused though as he carefully looked at him. Naruto started to become annoyed as he looked expectantly up at the man's face. Is there a problem? The man immediately shook his head as he cautiously asked. What's your name kid? Uzumaki Naruto. Oh. The man looked pensive for a moment before smiling. I decided that I'll leave this stand alone for today because of you. Turning towards the stand owner, he kicked the stand. Next time, have the money ready. Seeing the man stomp away, the owner breathed a sigh of relief before thanking Naruto. I'm sorry you had to use your money. You always seem to be helping us Naruto. Now that Gato's here, things have become even harder for everyone. If there's anything that we could do for you, please, let us know. Naruto Bodas took an apple. Thank you, but this will be plenty. Walking into the marketplace, Naruto smiled as he saw Hayami's sitting figure on the nearby sidewalk. Using a furtive sunshine after making sure that no one would see, he quickly vanished and reappeared behind her and dropped an apple on her lap. Business not going well today? Ah. Hayami fell over as her white hair flew forward. Standing up, she glared at Naruto as she bent forward to pick up her flowers. Business is going well. It's just that I was tired, that's all. Anyways. What are you doing here? Naruto sat down next to her as he picked up the apple and wiped it. Tossing it back at her, he watched her happily begin to munch it with thanks. I was just taking a break. By the way, thanks for the flower. It was nice. Flipping a coin into her basket, he lay down on the stones and looked up at the sky. His short respite was interrupted though as the coin flew back and hit him on the nose. Ow. What was that for? Hayumi pouted her lips as she shook her head. That flower was a gift. And also, I wanted to tell you sorry. Naruto lay back down as he waved it off. It's my business. It had nothing to do with your comment. But really, you'll accept an apple but you won't accept money? Hayami smiled as she finished the apple and placed it in a nearby trash can. That was because you scared me earlier. Smiling, she lay down beside him and looked up at the clouds. The two shared a comfortable silence for a while before Naruto felt that it was time to go back to work. Even if business was slow, he still needed to do something. Standing up, he brushed off the dust as he stretched. Hayami too stood up as she tied her hair back and picked up her basket. Oh yeah. You're not doing anything for dinner tonight, are you? Hayami shook her head as she looked at the coins in her basket. I don't think so. Naruto slightly cringed as he realized that she meant that she wouldn't have enough money to eat. Sighing, he took her shoulder as he led her to a nearby shop. What are you doing Naruto? Trying to hide her blush, she looked away from him. We're going to get you some clothes. You don't want to wear that to Inari's house, do you? Inari-kun? Yeah, we're going to eat dinner there tonight. Gen usually sleeps pretty early, so I thought that I'd take you. Hayami looked at her basket as she counted the coins. But I don't have money to. Naruto stared at her sternly before grabbing her head and swaying it back and forth. Just think of it as an early birthday present. You can use it for diapers later if you want. Hayami nodded while holding onto her head as she stepped into the store with him. Naruto handed her a clump of cash before walking off to the weapons part of the store. Make sure you pick something decent. Thinking a bit, he smirked as he waved her off. I don't want to be seen with a horribly dressed person. Naruto said blonde turned away as he looked at the nearby weapons. He was able to spot several flaws in them, especially in the swords. Shaking his head, he was about to leave when a sword in the corner of the store suddenly caught his eye. Looking up at an attendant, he politely called for his attention. Excuse me. Why is that sword alone in that corner? The attendant smiled as he shook his head. Oh, that one's strange. For some reason, 
the sword won't come out of the scabbard. We tried to break the scabbard, but since it's made out of metal, hmm. I see. Walking over to it, he lifted it up and felt its weight. How much for it? The attendant looked surprised as Naruto placed it on the counter. Um. I'm not sure since we didn't put a. Naruto placed a large amount of cash onto the table. Is this enough? The attendant's eyes sparkled as he nodded furiously. Naruto smiled as he took the sword and walked away. The sword intrigued him. He would have to explore it later. But for now, Naruto walked up to a nervous Hayami as he tapped her shoulder. Done? Holding out a lump of cash in front of him, she bowed her head as she tried to hide her embarrassment. I'm sorry I use so much. This place is so expensive and... Naruto walked away before she finished her sentence. Whatever. Just make sure you wear that tonight. Hayami blinked as she ran to catch up with him. But your money... I get paid very well for my swords. I thought you knew this. I have a lot more, so it's no big deal. Look, I even bought this sword on a whim. So just keep the rest for yourself. But, if you feel bad about it, then come by the house and make some food for us. Gen's only able to make porridge, so it's nice to have some variety. Hayami remained silent as Naruto headed back to his house. Oh, and make sure you come to Gen's house around 7. We can go together to Inari's house from there. Smiling, Hayami nodded as she waved goodbye. Thanks Naruto. I won't be late, ooh oh. Gen watched Naruto carefully as the boy produced bolt after bolt with incredible celerity. For some reason, he seemed cheerful today. Of course, cheerful for Naruto usually consisted of him not having a dark aura around him. But Gen had developed an innate sense that helped him know what Naruto's mood was, even when the boy remained as secretive as possible. It was a skill that he and Hayami shared. Did something good happen today? Naruto paused as he looked towards the man. No. Although, I will go eat dinner with Inari's household. Pausing, he then added. With Hayami. Gen smiled as he stroked his beard. I see. That's good to hear. You and Hayami have been getting along well these days. Naruto continued making bolts as he remained silent. Well, why don't you take a break until Hayami comes? I'm sure you'd like to take a shower after working in the shop all day. I'll work the rest of the night. Naruto nodded thankfully as he put his hammer down. Thank you Gensan. I will see you tonight then. Gen nodded as Naruto walked upstairs. Picking up a chisel, he began to carve out a sculpture as he sat down in his chair. The boy had much to learn still. Looking at the counter, he smiled as he saw the bolts all perfectly lined up. Looking at each bolt, Gen sighed as he comfortably chipped away at the wooden block. He knew of the boy's secret, the boy's power. A few days ago, he had seen him on a wanted poster. Sighing heavily, he stopped his work as he looked up the stairs. Hopefully the boy would learn to get over whatever sordid past he had and learn to live a new life. If he could help just this one boy. Images of blood and carnage filled Gen's mind as he dropped the sculpture. No, he wouldn't let it turn out the same way for him. Walking over the bolts, he inspected them and began to make some more, the wooden sculpture and chisel left forgotten underneath his chair. Ooh oh. Gato frowned as he sat in his chair. This man, Keiza, was proving to be a hindrance to his plans. To control the wave, he needed to crush their hope first. The Keiza figure would be a good example. Looking at his two guards, he smiled maliciously as he crossed his hands. Take Keiza, by force if needed, and bring him to the nearby warehouse. Oh, and you can beat him a little if he resists. Just don't kill him. And don't cut off anything. I have something special planned for him. The samurai grinned as they walked off. Another man came in at the same time as he kneeled before him. Oh, Kenzu. Do you have any more information on that boy? Holding out a wanted poster, the man nodded. Yes. The boy with a million Rio bounty is indeed living in the village. He is staying at the carpenter Gen's store. I see. Then we'll attack tonight and... Gato sama if I may interrupt. Gato looked at the man with annoyance as he stood up and tapped his cane on the floor in front of him. What is it? The man gulped as he looked up. Well, he has a relationship with a local peasant. She has no class standing, so there wouldn't be any problem with using her. Who's this, girl? She's young and seems to be close to him. I looked into it and found that her father is a poor drunkard who is actually abusive. So perhaps. Gato smiled wickedly as he sat back down. Kenzu, I've just had a wonderful idea. We'll use that girl to get to this, Naruto of the Jogan. Tossing a pile of money towards him, he grinned evilly. Here, use this money to buy her from her father. Do whatever you want with her after. But make sure he sees. I want him to come to me personally. It'll make it easier for us. But sir, aren't you worried that the boy might pose a threat to you? Gato scoffed as he spit out to his side. I bet he's just some rich politician's son. He's too young to be a real threat and besides, I have my two bodyguards with me. Tonight, 
This land and his one million Rio bounty will become mine. Kenzu grinned as he took the money. Yes, Gato sama. I will be taking some men with me though, for some extra precaution. Yes, do whatever you want. Just make sure he gets here. Ooh oh. Sasuke dodged an incoming fireball from Kakashi as he jumped up to the trees. Throwing out several kunai with strings attached, he tried to hook the copin into a nearby tree but ended up catching a clone instead. Jumping out of the tree, he then created a cage bunshine and sent it off in the other direction. Predicting his opponent's next actions, he quickly turned to the left as he deflected several kunai with his own. Making hand seals, he ran towards the area the kunai had come from and blew a fireball at a pile of boulders. A smoldering figure flew out of the giant abyss as it suddenly turned to water in midair and soaked Sasuke from head to toe. Cursing his carelessness, Sasuke jumped back but suddenly found his back stopped by a hand. Looking over, his eyes widened as he saw Kakashi with his other hand ignited by lightning. Chidori. Kakashi slammed the Chidori into the ground, but the electricity of the attack immediately jumped up to the water and shocked Sasuke severely. Falling down, Sasuke weakly turned as he muttered curses at the smiling man. What was that? Gaki-chan. Mumbling a little louder, Sasuke forced down a grin. I said that the fight's not over yet. Kakashi's eye widened as Sasuke's clone from before suddenly erupted from the ground behind him and slashed with a kunai. The copy nid fell to his knees as Sasuke quickly got up and slammed his fist into stone. Sasuke cursed as he cracked the replaced stone. A sudden kick then hit him squarely in the jaw while also dismissing his clone. Damn you scarecrow. Kakashi clicked his tongue as he took out his book. And you're reading that stupid book again. Kakashi smiled as he shook his head. You're getting stronger Sasuke. In a couple of years, maybe you'll even get to the point where you'll be able to read Icha Icha Paradise. Sasuke sweat dropped as he stood up. What does that have to do with being strong? Kakashi frowned as he shrugged. Well, Asanin is the author and I, one of the strongest jounin in the village, is also an avid fan so, that just means you guys are perverted. Kakashi paused as he thought. Maybe so. Either way, you've become stronger Sasuke. At this point, you're ready for the Chunin exams. Although, we'll wait until you graduate and get a team. Sasuke nodded. One of the first things Kakashi had ingrained into him was that shortcuts were not better. Going the normal path was sometimes the better choice. Therefore, instead of doing as his brother did and graduating at an earlier age, Sasuke had chosen to follow the normal curriculum. The two remained silent before they heard a slight rumbling in the distance. Kakashi offhandedly commented as he saw the edges of a black fire flickering over the top of the trees. It looks like the black pillar is unsettled today. Sasuke nodded as he looked up to the moon. I have a bad feeling about tonight. Ooh oh. Naruto frowned as he looked at the clock. It was already 8. She was an hour early. Getting up from his seat, he walked to the door and swung it open. Is something the matter? Gen asked from above his newspaper. I can feel that there's something wrong. I'll just go to make sure she didn't trip somewhere or anything. Gen nodded as he put the newspaper down. It is dangerous for a young girl to be out alone at night. Make sure you bring an extra jacket. Naruto nodded as he took one and quickly ran out the door. Out in the night sky, he hopped up to the top of the buildings and squinted his eyes. Hayami's house was in the poorest district, in other words, the West District. Feeling the familiar sensation of having chakra fill his feet, he shined across the tops of the buildings as he quickly made his way towards her house. There was a pulling feeling in his gut, as if there was something wrong. Tensing his muscles, his movements became invisible as he flashed forward at an even greater speed, causing the jacket that he had been holding to fall back to the breeze. Stopping just above the building, he jumped down and calmly made his way towards the front door. Not bothering to knock, he opened it and was met with the immediate sight of a crying man. Narrowing his eyes, he recognized Hayami's so-called father moping pitifully on the floor. A strange feeling of anxiety began to fill him as he quickly grabbed the man's shirt. Where's Hayami? The man blinked through his alcohol-smelling tears as he grasped his face. Are you her friend? Are you? I'm so sorry, I'm sorry Hayami. I wasn't in my right mind, I just saw the money, I'm so sorry Hayami. I Shut up. Naruto breathed heavily as he grabbed the man by his throat and lifted him up. Where? Is. Hayami. The man looked at him fearfully as he tried to speak. Relaxing his grip slightly. Naruto set the man on the floor. Speak. She's. I. I sold her. Naruto's fist clamped on his face as he slammed him against the wall. What? I'm sorry. The man had offered so much money and I just. Where is she? Black chakra began to leak out of Naruto, causing the man to become even more frightened. The man said that he would be at the trash site in the second district. Naruto threw the man down as he glared at him. You should be ashamed of yourself. Not bothering to look back, he ran out of the house 
leaving the man alone in his puddle of tears and urine. Nardo's heart pumped with exertion as he flew to the second district. Every step made his heart feel even more scared. He had never experienced such an emotion before. Even in the past, when he had faced death with that one Anbu captain, he had not felt fear. But now. Now he needed to save her, no matter what he did. At any cost. Landing in front of the garbage site, Naruto felt numerous chakra signals. Looking forward, he noticed that there was a large trash heap with a fire in front of it. The bastards were sitting in front of the fire as if they had done nothing wrong. Activating his Sharingan. He tried to find Hayami's white hair near them but found that she wasn't there. Breathing a sigh of relief, he began walking towards them but stopped suddenly when he spotted a semblance of white strewn upon the base of the trash heap. Oi, who's there? The five men near the campfire called out to him in drunken merriment. You deaf brat? Hurry up and go home before we teach you a lesson. One of them suddenly stopped the others though as he recognized the boy. Grinning, he yelled out. Aren't you Uzumaki Naruto of the Jogan? We've come to take you to our boss. Naruto ignored them though as he slowly walked towards the unmoving figure on the trash heap. Walking right past the grinning men, he bit his lip and drew blood. Hayami, bloody and battered, lay unnaturally above the trash with her mouth open and dried tears clinging onto her pale face. Her white hair was grimy with blood and her arms had several bruises on them. Her once vibrant green eyes were open with a permanent, dull glaze covering them. With rage, he realized that the dress she had bought earlier was in pieces next to her the cause of her state showing prominently in its shredded form. Trying to feel her pulse, he instead received frozen, deathly silence. Oh her? Ha, she only lasted a couple of turns. Kids really are worthless after all. The man from before laughed grotesquely as he took another swig from his wine bottle. Anyways, our boss wants to meet you so just. Trembling, he clenched his fists as a third Tomoe suddenly sharpened into his eyes. You. She was just a child. Laughing eerily. He gripped his face with his fingers as he looked up. Humans really are despicable things. Eh? What are you mumbling there kid? Turning slowly, Naruto's eyes turned crimson as three Tomoe began spinning rapidly around his pupil. Black chalk report from his body as it covered him with a shroud of death. Hey, what are you? The man didn't finish his sentence as he suddenly found himself without a head. The other men blinked a couple of times as they saw their friend's body slowly fall to the ground. Standing a couple feet away. Naruto held the man's head with his hand before crushing it with his bare hands. A spray of blood showered him as he felt his body tremble with rage. You bastards. I'll tear you all to pieces. Kenzu screamed as he quickly got up with his friends to run. They didn't get far though as their legs suddenly detached from under them, making them tumble over. Turning around, he suddenly found his neck in an iron grip. Wait. Wait. Despite being choked. He managed to get a couple of words out. Naruto's demonic eyes stared back with cold fury as his mouth snarled words. What? The one who told me to do this was Gato. He was the one that gave me the money and told me to do it. We're innocent. I'm innocent. I was just following orders. The man's voice bordered hysteria as he struggled against Naruto's grip. Gato? His grip lessened somewhat as the man sighed in relief. Yes, he's waiting for you at Warehouse 31. He's also planning to take care of Keizo there. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he dropped the man. Thank you. Thank you. Kissing the boy's feet, Kenzu's mouth tasted dirt as he continuously repeated the action. Turning towards the trash heap, Naruto looked at Hayami's body as he spoke softly. I'll give you a proper burial after this is all over. With that, he walked towards the outer edge of the trash area. Kenzu dropped to his knees as he saw that all of his friends had been torn apart to pieces. Bones, tissue, skin, hair eyes, and organs lay in a bloody mess all around him. But he had survived. He had. Naruto continued walking as a black flame suddenly erupted from behind him. Burn forever in my fire of hell. And make sure to tell the devil that he should expect another tonight. Gato. I'm coming for your head. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.